Hello and welcome to episode 128 of Gamers of Lost Park podcast and this, an extra special one, it's our E3 Spectacular. I'm your host Anthony Chesson and joining me this week is the other Sparks on the pod, two guys who have had E3 conferences beamed into their eyeballs for the last four days, it's Manny Brown and Steve Carter. Hello. Hello. How's it going? How, how is your second Christmas? Oh, it's just so cool. It's Christmas for gamers, I love it. It's just so, so much fun. <laughs> it's like you read the internet and it's actually interesting for once, like just for a week. Yeah, because there's nothing of interest at all going on at the minute. Like nothing at all, <laughs> nothing at all whatsoever. But no, you're right. This week is the most interesting part. I had a question for you yes. as well. Just out of curiosity, how many games have you pre-ordered in the last two days? Do you know what? Right now, I haven't pre-ordered any. Not a single one. I'm shocked. Not a single one. But you're, so you're the yes. king of pre-orders. What's going on? I know. I know. I know we do that, you know, because E3's only just officially just started, even though it feels like it's been going on for yeah. years. Um, it has just officially started today. So normally what I do, that's normally a Saturday morning after E3. You know, kind of go, it used to be like Amazon and things like that. But now you kind of just go to Microsoft Store and kind of download. Um, you know, there's <clears throat> lots of awesome games that we'll be talking about. And I'm very close to pre-ordering Overcooked mm-hmm. 2 um, on Xbox because you get extra chefs. Um, so yeah, so none at the moment. But there were... Ask me again. Yeah, next yeah I was going to say. I'll <laughs> ask you again on Sunday for sure. And that credit card's going to be hit hard. Yes. Well, yeah, it's great because like Microsoft doesn't actually charge your account until ten days oh, before. Right. I didn't know as that. Well. That's not too bad. So, yes, yes, because you always get that. They kind of send you an email just before. I don't know what it's like with Sony or Nintendo, yeah. um, but I know kind of Microsoft like that. Uh, it's quite interesting actually because we had a bit of a discussion, didn't we, yesterday or the day before, which was. Forza Horizon mm-hmm. 4, you know, which, a spoiler alert, we'll get to in a moment, which was announced uh, during the Xbox One. You know, they have an Ultimate Edition. <laughs> so, and I had a quandary that I put to the group. was like, what do I do? You know, do I order the Ultimate Edition or do I just get it free with Games Pass? Yeah, I think um, James was not exactly happy with you asking that question, was he? Just, a, He was just a little no. bit miffed. <laughs> he put me right. <laughs> he put, Thomas put me right. He kind of like... <laughs> It, it is a fair point though, because you will if you will basically be paying a hundred pounds to play it. What five days early, basically, as opposed to Game Pass. Yeah, and obviously you get all the trinkets. I think it's well. seventy nine. Yeah, it's seventy nine ninety nine, and you get two DLCs, mm. VIP, so you get double XP. That's just cheap. Um, you get the map feature. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's why I've got thirty million in my Forza Horizon <laughs> three account. Um, you get some car packs, and you get all that sort of stuff. So there's, there, there is bonus tchotchkes with yeah. it, so there is stuff there. But it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because what about if they ever take it away? What about if they take? What about if they take it away? If they take it out of Games Pass, we haven't dealt with anything going out of Games Pass. Ha- have yet, they have actually we? said what if if they'll do that? Because I know they said obviously they're no, going to add everything they... to it from first party studios, but yeah, I suppose they've not really said if they could remove stuff like Netflix style or have stuff rotating in and out. That's it. That's it. I mean, the other day I was I wanted to watch something on Netflix. I was like, oh, I'll go and watch it. I know it was on Netflix. I went there and it wasn't mm. there anymore. You know, it'd gone. So, but then again, I guess I should just listen to James, not pre-order, <laughs> and if that day ever happens, I can. And I'm still playing Forza Horizon Four. Then I can. Uh, I can Indeed. buy it then. Keep them happy. Keep them happy. But anyway. Yeah, that was a good question. A good question. Um, so, guys, how how's your week been? How is how are things in your world, Manny? Yeah, not too bad at all. I've been on it for ages, actually. So I, I'm just going to spend the next five hours telling you exactly what I've been doing for the past six months. That's right. We've got nothing else to talk about. <laughs> so I prepared a massive no, list. No. Um, yeah, last week I've not really been doing much at all apart from watching the E3 stuff. Um, so mm-hmm. what am I doing outside of that? I'm, I'm brewing some beer. At the moment I've got a nice uh, yes. nice IPA going. I've just set the Ooh. Set the fridge to, to cold crash it today, so that's when you get to the end of the um, sort of uh, very close to sort of bottling the beer. Then you you set the fridge as cold as you can to drop all the little particles out of it, so you get like a clear a clear beer. Oh, so that's what I've been doing today. Wow. Then I'll bottle that on Saturday. And then I'm going to make another one on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Superb. So the IPA that you're brewing now, when's that drinkable? I'm just got my calendar <laughs> here. <so. Yeah. laughs> um, once you've bottled it, generally between sort of two and three weeks, because it needs time to carbonate in the bowl. I mean, you could drink it straight away, but it's flat, basically. Um, right. So yeah, right. around about sort of two or three weeks, and I'm sure I can sling some up in the post to you. To you both. Oh, that's just so cool. And then you get you get Steve to come over, and then he'll he'll rate it as points. I know. Yeah. He would just. Like, I, I, I yeah. might be a bit nervous for that. To be honest, I might just have to send it to you first thing. <laughs> sort of get that critical view on untapped. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have you tried that? Have you tried that untapped app? Have you actually tried that? Because you can actually set locations in the app, so you could set your house as like a little mini microbrewery. Really? 
Ah, damn. I mean, yes. I need to come up with a name for the brewery, don't I? Okay, I'll, I'll, have, yeah. I'll have to ponder on that one. <laughs> <laughs> challenge challenge dished out so Steve how are things with you sir apart from E3 non-stop how's things with you sir yeah not too bad not too bad I'm not I'm not brewing beer just drinking beer um, up, up north but uh, but yeah mostly beyond E3 just playing Sea of Thieves mainly um, just been just been jumping on that pretty much every night this week so um, looking forward to the new stuff you know the uh, the Megalodon and the new stuff that's coming out at the end of this year that we got um, we got announced as part of the E3 trailer, so yeah, I'm um, just trying to build up as much as I can, get a bit more experience. So I'm not uh, not the noob, you know, plowing the ship into the sandbanks and uh, uh, you know remembering to hurl the sails in at the right moment and drop the anchor. You know, I'm, I'm trying not to do a chesson. That's what I'm trying to do. Yes, <laughs> I was going to say. I was going to say that's my job. My job is to get scorned by James <laughs> and the chesson generally maneuver. park really bad. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be the in best. there. It's going to be an achievement. It's going to be an achievement later on. If you crash your <laughs> ship, you get the Chesser Maneuver achievement. So, E3 has started. So, like I say, this is kind of more of a kind of E3 spectacular. I believe it's the third? It must be the third. It must be the third Spark E3 spectacular. Um, but before we start breaking down the conferences and jumping into all of the good stuff, uh, don't forget you can rate, review, and subscribe to this very podcast for free on iTunes and YouTube. Right, so... E3 guys, let's jump in. We'll go through all of the conferences, kind of breaking down the news, the announcements, and the surprises, uh, which there were quite a few. Um, so first up on Saturday was EA. So did you guys watch it live? Did you kind of just catch it later? Uh, I kind of dipped in and out, really. Um, I, I think I watched a bit of it live uh, whilst I was gaming, and kind of just kept dipping in and out, watching bits, and then kind of just following bits on Twitter and social media and, and other coverage from other websites as well. So. Which I think Microsoft's the only real conference that I watched from start to finish, uh, purely. Right. A lot of them I've dipped in and out of, really, which I think Microsoft was, was the main one for me, which we'll come on to a little bit later. But yeah, I thought, in all honesty, it was a bit, a bit flat, a little bit disappointing. I thought, you know, they could have potentially got the, the show off to a, you know, a bit more, a bit more of a, a high intensity start. There were, there was nothing really in there that we weren't expecting or didn't already know about, which, I think that's kind of a year for it at the moment, where we're going to get just a bit, drip, a bit more information about stuff that we already know is coming. But I, I, I think I'm the only one that's not excited by Anthem. I think you know, the, <laughs> oh, the, you know. I, how I, could you not be excited uh, by about Anthem? Anyway, let's let's get we'll get to Anthem because yeah. that was their last thing. So so the EA show, I thought I thought they did I thought they did a really good job. I thought um, Andrea Renee, who did the hosting, I thought she did a really good job. You know, she's the there is that there is a problem that you kind of saw and, and Nicola, my wife, kind of noted a, a few times when she was watching the conferences or the pre conferences. You know, there's a lot of people just being kind of like, pretend to be excited and it just comes off wrong. And they're just like, but Andrew Renee, who is a is, is she's on kind of funny, and she has her own YouTube, which is what's good game. She was like, she's she loves this stuff, and you could tell that. I think from it, I think she was really kind of doing the best she could. And I thought she did quite a good job of kind of keeping the show together because they started off with they started off with Anthem, and then after that they went to Battlefield Five. And they went to kind of Battlefield Five and announced that Battlefield Five is going to have a battle royale mode. <laughs> Yeah, which I'm I'm quite looking forward to, but I'm I'm thinking, Steve, you're not so much of a fan, are you? Yeah, it's just everyone's trying to do it, aren't they? Yeah, you know, it's just everyone's trying to do battle royale, and, <laughs> and it's just, just do something new, just do something, just do what <laughs> Battlefield does. Battlefield kind of stands out from the crowd enough as it is because it's not Call of Duty; it does its own thing. So just do more of that. Just yeah. do more of that. Which I'll give it a go. You know, I, I will give it a go in terms of see what what it is and how they they make it work but I think they could just do so much more particularly with the World War 2 setting in their own way yeah. and just do something different but I- I'm willing to give it a go but I just yeah. wish people would stop trying to copy Fortnite and PUBG and, and everything I just wish they'd just do their own thing yeah so we're probably I guess we're probably not going to have a chance to talk about it much today but there was there was a PC gaming conference also and if you want to see something mm-hmm. funny, just watch that because it was two hours long, and there must have been about seven or eight different battle royals on there, including one that's <laughs> that's one thousand players. Now that I want to see for sure. A thousand, a thousand players, players, yeah, players. On, on, a, on a single map. How is that going to work? It's just insane. How big must that map be? Yeah, exactly. It must be huge. But you're right. I mean, there were literally seven or eight on there, so it is it is just that that flavor of the month, isn't it? Currently, and to be fair, it's it's a yes. pretty good game mode. But you're right. I mean, once you play two or three of them, you kind of you're kind of done with it. I think. 
But the great thing about the great thing about um, Battlefield Five is that you've still got a single player campaign. You know, you've still got the uh, Battlefield tried and tested. <clears> you know, the capture the areas mode, which I really love. You know, because for me, when I'm playing that game, I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm not so much about kind of killing everyone. I'm more about support and helping kind of capture those flags. That's kind of my objective yeah. in in those games. You know, I let other people jump around and do the shooting, but for me, I'm just kind of I'm going to go to point A and go with the crowd and and try and take it take that capture point rather than kind of take someone out yeah the the thing I, the thing that i liked about the look of this one as well in terms of multiplayer is they seem to have brought back the destruction levels from bad company 2 which i know they've sort of strayed yes. a little bit away from i know i know we, we were chatting about this in, in whatsapp and i know 4 was there was quite a lot of it in there but it still wasn't quite as much as this i think mm. but yeah that trailer looked fantastic you know with the tanks smashing through the houses and knocking off little bits of buildings and stuff and that really made me sort of want to buy it, to be honest, and get back into it, because that's the stuff that I miss. Yes, mm. yes. I mean, that that makes Battle Royale quite interesting, because you can't hide in a farmhouse, because if you've got a just tank, you can just take yeah, that farmhouse it. straight out. You know, and that's quite, that's quite cool. But yeah, no, I hope that uh, the other modes are just as fulfilled as, yeah. uh, <clears throat> and fully formed as that, that Battle Royale, just, to, just so Steve's yeah. happy. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm like the same as you, though. I, I like playing Battlefield, because you can... It's not like Call of Duty where you have to run around and be focused on getting kills. You know, the objective modes is what Battlefield's more about, you know, so you can get, you can enjoy the game by, let's say, by holding strong points, reviving people, mm-hmm. you know, doing it, you know, giving people ammo, that sort of thing. And, and that's, you know, it's a team based game. Without those people, that game would fall apart, you know, because people do treat those modes as just team deathmatch, whereas they're not, you know, so I, I'm the same as you. I'll either be a, you know, be the guy running around either reviving people or dishing ammo boxes out. So, you know, I mm. hope that that I, I imagine it will be. You know, because that's what Battlefield's about. But I imagine that will be a key focus of theirs as well as this this battle royale mode as well. So, fingers crossed. You know, I, I'll get it because I love the World War Two setting. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm glad that it's back. Mm. So, um, either way, I'll I'll be getting on board with it. So I'll um, I'll get it. I'll see what it does. And um, you never know. I might be a battle royale convert at the end of it. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I've, I haven't got it in my notes, but did they announce the player count for the battle royale mode? No, I can only assume yeah. it's going to be a hundred, though, same as same as the rest of them. I, I sort of mm, feel like with right. Battlefield, it, it's like the one game that's sort of earned the right to try it as well, because obviously they've they've had the highest player counts of all the different all the different sort of shooters for yes. years mm. now. So I feel, I mean, they they got up to sixty four on the PC, so it's not a massive leap to go to go up from 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 there, to be honest. No, no. Mm. And then next up after kind of Battlefield was uh, FIFA nineteen, um, and I think FIFA nineteen. But did they also announce a World Cup FIFA as well? It was going to be an update for FIFA uh, FIFA eighteen, wasn't it? So that, that's right. going to come out as an update because I know I don't think they've done it for a while now. But they used to release the standalone versions, didn't mm. they? The World Cup versions, but they did, yeah. that's coming out as an update. Um, for FIFA 18, so there's no no reason to buy a, a standalone version anymore. Yeah, it's quite it's quite a nice yes. thing for them, for them to do that actually, because they, they used mm. to make an absolute ton of money off that. But it's it's a free update for the game you've got, so fair yeah. play. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. And then and then um, Andrew and I went into the audience um, and sat next to one Vince Sampella, um, who was uh, and there was a very kind of like very coy. I think Vince had actually kind of tweeted the day before to say that he had something. Uh, I think he was saying that that Andrew and A is forcing him in quotes to announce what they're working on, and that was that Respawn are working on a Star Wars game. So it was uh, Respawn Star Wars uh, was announced. We didn't get any trailer, we didn't get any teaser or anything, but they did say that it would be out in 2019 in time for um, Episode Nine, which was actually one of my predictions last week. So I was quite, I was quite happy. I was like, yes, high five no, myself. You're smug or anything, but yeah. No, yeah. no, not that I'm smug. No, I'm, I think James got one kind of on the day after the pod or something when I went live. So I think he's already kind of he's already in front of me. Um, but they did announce that the game is called Jedi Fallen Order, and it will take place between Episodes Three and Four. Um, so in the dark times they called it mm. so I quite like that so it's kind of after I guess they, they did the Order 66 is it Order 66 yeah. when they kind of wiped out all of the Jedi so it must be kind of somewhere around there your rogue Jedi still still alive yeah I, I'm I'm very happy that they're, they're, they're sort of doing that but to be honest I, I was I was more happy to find out that they've got two teams because I can only presume the other team is then going to be working on Titanfall 3 because if they were doing just the mm. Star Wars stuff, I think that would have been a, a, a little bit of a, a waste of that uh, studio. Did, did, did you guys play Titanfall 2 at all? Yeah. Oh, yes. That, yeah. That's the thing. I, 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 I a little that. bit. Oh, it's mm. 
such a good game. Such a good, it's in uh, it's on EA Access mm. at the moment because I played it on PlayStation Four because at that point it was the shiniest was over on PlayStation Four Pro. Um, but then I've downloaded it on EA Access. Excuse me, I've downloaded it on EA Access um, to play it again on the Xbox One X, you know, to see kind of 4K mm. HDR. Um, but there's that one level where you kind of have time manipulation, yeah. and I just love that. That's like one of my favourite levels of, of kind of recent years of, of any no, game. No, same, same as well. That that level, and there was the other one as well, where you're in, where you're in, you're in the sort of factory, and you remember they're building the houses around you, and it's sort of rotating mm. on the side. Yes. But those two yes. are some of the best FPS levels I have ever played, I think. So I think as long as they get to carry yeah. on doing that and do the Star Wars stuff, then great. Yes, and it just looks so good. It just looks, someone. I think I was listening to a podcast before E3, and they were saying, "What about if they announce a Titanfall Battle Royale?" And I was like, "Oh my god, that would be amazing!" Every now and then, a mech drops, and you have to run for the mech and then just wipe everyone out. But it was yeah. But like, I think like, that's one like game a, that would work with it, though. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. I think so. What about like a like an yeah. overcooked Battle Royale. <laughs> oh, that would be so yeah. cool. A hundred chefs yeah, go in. Absolutely, yeah. One comes out. Yeah, as soon as you as soon as you mess up a meal, that's it, you're out. You're out, yeah. you're done. Or or Nicola just, just froze you out. It's like Gordon <laughs> Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> And then after that, so that dropped, I went kind of quite excited. I'm quite excited about any kind of Star Wars. I think I was saying last week um, that I do, I did enjoy the single player on the Battlefront 2, uh, on Battlefront 2. So any kind of other, this will be a single player Fallen Jedi. And that's all we've got at the moment. After that was Unravel 2. Mm. Um, and the kind of endearing guy from Unravel kind of came out again and said that he's been kind of making another Yarny game. Um, and this time you get kind of another, um, another another Yarny, um, so you, there's a red Yarny and a blue Yarny, this can be played as couch co-op, or it could also be played alone with you combining uh, the two Yarnies together so you can actually just combine the two Yarnies and then work off them, and a lot of the mechanics were about kind of switching between the character, like pulling a, a lever, and then switching to the other one, and then running up a trunk or something like that, and and, and this was great because this was one of those great E3 announcements where they said that um, Unravel 2 will be available today, um, um, and it was available on Xbox Live and PlayStation 4 and PC um, straight after the are you, conference. Are you tempted to pick that up? Did, did you play the first one at all? I've already I've downloaded because there's a ten in, in true EA fashion. There's a ten hour uh, oh, of trial course, yeah. of uh, of Unravel Two. So I played the first level uh, straight after the conference. So I kind of like downloaded that. Oh, actually no, not straight after. I, I played it on the Sunday morning. Um, so I sat there and just kind of played it, and I was really enjoying it. It's really lovely. It's a really lovely. I guess game. and that's got to be one of the trials where they lock you off after the first couple of levels, though. So I. I doubt that game's yes, that long. To be honest. Yes. No. No. Exactly. Yeah. I got. I got past the first level. Got the achievements for that. So even the trial gives you achievements as well. And it took me into the second one. But I bet you're right. You know, even though I'm not ten hours in, I get to the end of the second level, and that will be yeah, it. Indeed. It's just a pure taster. And then after that, we had um, Sea of Solitude. Yeah, I thought this looks superb, to, to be honest. It's one of those games that's got just a really distinctive art style to it. Um, so it's like a yeah. like a sort of third-person platformer-ish, I would say. Um, uh, the, the theme is sort of mental Ill- illness, isn't it? So you're sort of um, you're trying to help this girl sort of battle her inner demons and so on and so forth, bring around this really colourful world. Um, did either of you guys play a game called... Uh, Oh, what was it called? I think it was called Papo EO about three or four years ago. Yes, the the, the monster. Yeah. Was that the one with the big That's right. one? Yes. It's very, yes. very similar to that, I thought, in terms of art style and theme right. as well. But that was a great game, so yeah, anything like that. I am absolutely down to play. Yeah, and that was quite good. So I guess Unravel Two and Sea of Solitude—they're the two EA indie titles of like for this mm. year. You know, so did they give a release date for Sea of Solitude? I think it was later this year. I, I can't remember. I can't remember when, but no, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. Wasn't soon. Uh, yes. Due early 2019. Mm. Um, ah, right, right. Okay. That, 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 of Solitude, yeah. yeah, that seemed to be a running theme, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, of the of EA of uh, of E3 was like early 2019. Yeah. Everything, everything's Febu- coming out in February 2019. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> February is packed. I think February the 22nd is going to be the new October 26th. Mm. You know, like last year where we had lots of stuff that came out. We had Zelda and and um, Horizon, Horizon yeah. and all that. Yeah, there, there was all that sort of stuff. I think it's going to be the same again <laughs> this year, but February the 22nd. 
And then up next, EA took it to the to the highest of the high <laughs> the hype factor, and they went mobile. They went, they kind of brought out <laughs> just as they were doing good. I was there. Yep, yeah, this is good. This is good. They brought out a couple of shoutcasters, a couple of uh, a couple of people on from Twitch who are kind of. Um, real-time strategy people from Twitch, and they played um, a game, an unknown game at that point, and they were just showing how you kind of had to um, steal each other's bases, launch missiles by kind of being around the missiles, on the tiles around the missiles. And then after, I don't know, 10 excruciating minutes, they announced <laughs> that this is a new Command & Conquer game, and it's a Command & Conquer game for uh, iOS and Android. Yeah, I have I, I have signed up for it because I, I love me a bit of Command and Conquer. Although to be honest, as soon as they said oh. it was mobile, I, I sort of switched off at that point. But I have to try it, man. Like our sort of group of friends that that, that play uh, games, we we got hooked on Command and Conquer Generals back in the day. So sort of anything oh, yes. Command and Conquer, we we just have to jump back in and try now. They've been crap ever since, but you know I'm just living in hope that one of them will sort of catch on like that at some point. It's not going to be this one because you know yes. phone game, but there we go. But the the Command and Conquer Red Alert, I really liked playing. Like Red, I remember playing it on the 360. Yeah, I played a lot of them on the 360. They were really good. They were really kind of I, you know when everyone says that real time strategy games can't exist on a console, I'm there playing you know Halo Wars and Command and Conquer and the other one with mechs. It was just like it was really good. It was good time. Yeah. Good time. And then I think one one thing that I've kind of missed was that they also had an update on Star Wars Battlefront saying that Star Wars Battlefront uh, was going to have some Clone Wars stuff. And then there were Tumbleweeds. So cool. Yeah, so they finished it off strongly. <laughs> so Here's a mobile Jim game and some Clone Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and we shall leave. I was excited. <laughs> I was excited. They had um, Lando Carizian. I'll keep talking. Um, Lando Carizian <laughs> in his skiff, in his skiff outfit from Return of the Jedi, which was awesome. Uh, they had General Grievous as well, and Obi Wan Kenobi. But they didn't show any pictures of Obi Wan Kenobi, so we don't know if it's going to be uh, Alec Guinness or if it's going to be Ewan McGregor. Uh, Ken- Obi Wan Kenobi. I should think it will be probably be Ewan McGregor. But they also had some Clone Wars stuff as well that is heading to Battlefront Two. And then, kind of during that show, they also announced um, Origins. Access Premiere as well. Yeah, this is like a like a like a streaming service, isn't it? That they're sort of dabbling mm. with. Is that right? Is it coming to consoles or is it just PC only? I, could, I didn't. I must have nipped out and got a drink at that point because I sort of <laughs> came back and caught the tail end. It's of it. just um, PC. So um, yeah, just EA PC. Origins okay. is kind of the EA access of the kind of Xbox One to PC, um, and it is just PC. Yep. So I think it's very similar to EA Access, but you just get every game kind of day and date. So it's almost like EA's version of Game Pass, really. Um, but it's just every all yeah, the but- games. But it's it's video streaming, isn't it? So it's more like sort of PlayStation Now. Right. Is, is that right? right? I think. Anyway, I need to. I need fact to check. Fact cool. check. Steve. Doing. Fact check. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking and I can't see anything about it streaming. I can see a bit about a bit about the cost. I think it is just that you do get the full game. Oh great. Com- there's no there's no suggestion about it being streamed. Yeah. Oh brilliant. Um, okay. From what I, I'm reading I must anyway. Have totally misread that. Then brilliant. That's 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 better thing. So I was going to say we don't need we don't need a, a fourth or fifth streaming service to be. No, honest. no, exactly. Well, mm. Microsoft did yeah. announce one though, didn't they? That they were <laughs> they're looking into that kind of playing on any device. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just says in um, Eurogamer article said that EA uh, has announced Origin Access Premier, new PC subscription service, uh, which will get you access to the new games as they arrive. So think of it as Game Pass. So yeah, so it's um, so it's eighty nine ninety nine if you're in the UK. Uh, hundred dollars if you're in the US um, so Yikes. it's not bad that's not bad with the amount of games that EA are kind of putting out you know all you have to do is no, be interested not. in some of those games and you're it's a, it's, a, it's a good purchase yeah so if they brought that to Xbox I would probably think about doing it to be honest because there's probably at least two or three games I would play from the catalogue mm every year so it would probably worth Absol- it at that absolutely point. because you know EA access is great but you have to wait a while don't you say so you have to wait a yeah. good six months before Battlefield 5 goes into EA access um, but it was quite cool mm. so so overall I think that's it kind of for EA um What's the Manny rating? So each conference, <laughs> Manny has been scoring conferences. So when what's the what's the Manny rating for uh, for this conference? I think I think if I've done it, you, you guys should do a, a gut score as well. So my 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 score that I gave that on my notes was just a six, right? Solid six, right? It was okay. It wasn't it wasn't great. I thought it was solid, but as Steve said, it's pretty much all stuff that you knew was was going to be there. The one thing I did like was that they mentioned that they weren't doing loot boxes at least three times mm. in that conference, which I thought was fantastic. <laughs> They had to get that in there. Kept on coming back. People heard it. Yeah. 
like, three times. <laughs> sure. we'll down- you can download these you guys? for free. That's what they kept saying, wasn't it? It was like, well, you can download these for free. It's cosmetic. It's not going to break the game. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I think I'll, I'll go with the Manny rating. I think about a good good six point. I'll give it six point five just for general grievous. Um, so, so <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Steve? I'll play devil's advocate. I'll give it. I'll give it five Ooh. and a half. <laughs> uh, Low bar. It was almost a six, but but yeah, there's just nothing in there that we weren't expecting. So yeah, for sure, it takes a lot to impress. Yes. Me. And hopefully the next one did, because on Sunday at 9pm uh, for the UK guys, uh, it was about 3 o'clock, I think, 3 or 4 for US, we had Microsoft. Steve, do you want to kind of kick off the Microsoft rundown? Yeah, so um, so I'll go in order what's, um, what we've got here. So they, they touched upon the new Halo yes. coming out, albeit we didn't get much uh, information beyond it's called Halo Infinite. Um, read into that title what you will. Battle Royale. Um, but we at least saw... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, they can't. They can't. Surely they can't. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we got a, a brief glimpse of Master Chief mm-hmm. again. Um, so what what that will be, um, we yet to see. Um, there's a new Ori game in the works, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. So that was that was quite well received, I think, because I I've not played Ori in the Blind Forest, but I know that was um, quite critically acclaimed. I think did you. You've spoken about it quite a lot, I think, haven't you, uh, Anthony, on, on the podcast? Yeah, before. absolutely. I love that uh, Ori is just, Ori in the Blind Forest is amazing. It's hard as nails. You know, the, my problem is, I think there's there's two games that I absolutely love the art style of, um, which is Cuphead and Ori, um, but both of those are just so hard. They're just so, those games are, I actually got my nephew once to get me past a level in Ori in the Blind Forest. I had to get Ed to get me past a level because it was just so difficult to do. So it was, uh, yeah, but no, it's, it's absolutely superb. I love that game. Yeah. So, um, and, and touching on that later down the line, we did get some cup, cup head news as well, but we'll, we'll come back to that. But there's it's quite a long list, so you'll have to uh, bear with. So, uh, from Software and Activision, uh, brought a new samurai game or announced a new samurai game called Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which I thought looked pretty cool, mm. actually. That looked quite interesting, that. So, um, sort of a, a third, pi- third person, sort of Japanese hack and slash. Um, I can slash title, which I, I you know, look, might look that like, quite interesting, something a bit, bit new. Yeah, um, it just it looked like it, uh, it looked like it played very much like a sort of Dark Souls as well, which, which is pretty mm, cool. I think it looked like yeah. it's going to be rock yeah. hard because that was from yeah, uh, from software, wasn't it? From software and Activision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's right. Mm. Yeah. So if it's if it's anything like uh, Dark Souls or anything, then it will make me probably make me cry. <laughs> yeah, it's too difficult for me. I'll end up throwing a throwing a controller through the wall or something. <laughs> uh, but then moving on to um, with Bethesda's offering of Fallout 76, we've got um, a, a more, in, so I'll say more in depth for that, came a little bit later with the Bethesda conference, but we've got a, a more detailed glimpse of what Fallout 76 will look like, um, what it'll be, uh, which I'm, I'm excited for Fallout. I could play any Fallout game until the cows come home, so online, offline, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, I don't know what you guys think about it being online, but I'm, I'm happy with playing it with other people or playing it on my own either way I'm, I'm cool with that yeah I, th- I think it's I think it's going to be brilliant mm. um, if, you, if you look if you look at the size of that map as well it's just it's ridiculous it's something like four times yeah. the size of Fallout 4s or something it's it's vast and some of the things that I saw later on in the Bethesda conference made me really really want to want to sort of play it because they've got things like uh, like active nukes on, on the map yes. so a bunch of you can sort of band together launch a nuke and just knock out other players um, it looks like there's tons and tons of uh, thought been sort of uh, put put into it so you, you know you, you can build your houses you can build your settlements and the rest of it and i think if you're in that map with 24 24 players and you're not sure if people are friendly or whether you can trust mm. them or not there's a whole bunch of different sort of setups that are gonna that are gonna happen in, in that uh in that uh that that style of game so yeah I, i'm fully up for trying this i think yeah i think the the setting is, is as well is that with it being fallout 76 you're one of the first few people to step out of the vault i think that gives it a lot more scope than, say, starting it at the same sort of time scale as Fallout 4 or Fallout 3, you know. Mm-hmm. You are some of the first people out there, so civilization is non-existent, you know, there's nobody out there, so, like you say, to, to go out and build towns or cities or whatever it may be, to, to build them from the ground up, and if it's sort of dynamic in terms, obviously, you can go take other people's sounds or destroy people's sounds, yeah, that'd be, be quite interesting, really, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with I'm happy with that. People have said that if it's online, they're not interested. But I think Fallout was always going to lean a little bit onliney. Um, you know, given the Elder Scrolls, you know, dabbles with online modes as well. I think Fallout inevitably, eventually, was going to go that way. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. You know, with the technology that we've got now with the X and, and the Pro, the PS4 Pro, you know, it, it can it can do that now as well. So, but yeah, a, a map four times the size of Fallout Four. How, how can you <laughs> yeah. that and there was that there was yeah. that shot of like at the end of the trailer. I thought the trailer was a really good trailer. There was a shot at the end of the trailer where it had about four or five people in different color power armor, just kind of like standing on mm. the top of that verge. And I just thought that's just yeah. so awesome. If you could just band five people together, and then you're going to go and like you say, go and set off a nuke or go and take a town or something like that, it would just be so much fun. I just, I just, I really yeah. like it. In in their own sort of. Um, conference they did sort of come out and they, they, they were at pains to say that you didn't have to play it with other people mm. as well you can play it as a single player rpg should you want to so it sounds like there's going to be enough story content in there as well for people that people that don't want that sort of uh, multiplayer chaos um so yeah so moving on from that we um we got some more gameplay footage as well footage of metro exodus yes. which is launching on the 22nd of february next year um you know so <laughs> again the, the, the magical day, day to launch everything the magical day yeah which yeah. I think is looking really nice. That is looking like a really, mm. really good game. Um, I played the first Metro. I didn't play the second one, but I love that setting. I've I've read the book um, for the first one, um, you know, and, and I love that setting. So it'll be interesting to see what, you know, what they can do to kind of expand on that on that universe and that world uh, with Exodus. But it's going to look stunning on the X, you know, from what we've seen already. If mm. any of that is actually end gameplay footage, what we get next year, that will look stunning on the Xbox. So I was listening to the, the Giant Bomb podcast yesterday and I think um, Jeff Gersman has, has been out there and, and played it and he said it, it does look like that basically. It looks as you saw in that trailer, that's that's kind of what the gameplay footage is. The one thing they did say was that apparently the, the sort of shooting mechanics are a bit a bit off currently, that they mm. feel really swimmy and a bit and a bit sort of latent. So as long as they can fix that, great. But if if they don't, that could that could spoil it a little bit. Yeah, are they are they also yeah. reported it's running sixty frames a second? I think I read today as yeah, well. So right. it's just going to look ultra smooth as well. Mm. Yeah, but like you say, if if the if the shooting mechanics not nailed on, it kind of will ruin the full thing really. Because in a game where you're intended to survive, if you can't do that, then yeah, you know, that's kind of the big the big thing really. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, that's that's probably one of my one of my sort of most exciting um, games of the, of the conference. Cool. And, for next year, the start of next year anyway. Um, next, we were on to Neo Automata, which is on Xbox One later in June, um, which I've I've never played a Neo game, but I know there's kind of a little cult following for it, so I'm sure there was some sort of uh, sort of happy people there that, that that's coming out. You and should, then we saw some... Play it. It's really good. Yeah, yeah it, it's yeah. great. I played it on PS4. It is fantastic. It's, it's, such, it's such a weird game to sort of wrap your head around because you have to play it more than once. And each time you play it, the story branches and changes and stuff. And I can't really say why because that spoils the set of it. But if you've been tempted by it at all, you should definitely, definitely try it. And, and by the looks of it, it includes everything that it came out with on PS4 as well. So you are getting the the full version. So yeah. that that's good that you are getting everything uh, that came out as well. Um, and then we've got some more Crackdown Three, uh, Crackdown Three news, which we just before E3. I think it was just before E3 happened, but it was announced that it was pushed back to. 2019 wasn't it yeah um yeah. so we kind of got a bit of a pre-3 disappointment really that it's been moved some people were thinking it had been cancelled which i don't think microsoft could afford to cancel crackdown 3 and uh, you know it's been it's been happening for so long um you know one of the the main games that was supposed to sell the the xbox one x as well um you know i don't think they could afford to cancel it but we got a new video of, of it with uh terry cruz in there everyone loves a bit <laughs> of terry cruz to sell crackdown 3 yeah. um but yeah, it's, um, I think it was a bit tongue in cheek, wasn't it, really? Like saying that, you know, how far it's come since 2017 and improvements in the cell shading and how Terry Crews looked better and blowing the world up and this, that, and other. So it was a bit of a tongue in cheek approach, I thought. But I, I just worry about Crackdown 3 that by the time, if it comes out in February, we might have kind of lost quite a bit of steam and excitement for it. Um, you know, it's, it was supposed to be this year, now it's next year, and it's kind of like, is it going to be next year now? So. Obviously, with it being on Game Pass, it'll be free, and mm. obviously, pretty much everyone will play it who's got Game Pass. But whether or not the the hype and the anticipation over there when it comes out and if it lives up to that, um, that'll be interesting to yeah. see. Yeah, I was quite happy just to see it running. To be honest, I thought I thought it looked mm. really good. 
Because last time yeah. I saw it, it didn't you know they, they weren't showing much gameplay and it looked a, a bit framey and a bit off, but it looked really good. Yeah, I it looked much better mm. than last year with with the added kind mm. of Terry Crews likeness as well on kind of the main protagonist that they were showing. I think it kind of really did kind of just you, the the year that they they've delayed it by. I think is really kind of improving that game. And I think I think once you kind of collect your first orb or hear your first orb ping, yeah. I think that's when the excitement is <laughs> going to come back. And I think I think you're right, Steve. I think it's 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 good to be worried about it. But I think the moment, if it's a good game, and the moment people start jumping in, I think then it's going to just kind of like like the first one. I think a lot of people bought the first Crackdown because it came with a Halo demo. Um, so it was a de- yeah. so. But then word of mouth came around. and was like, actually, this is a really good game and it's fun, you know. And I think if they kind of just captured that element, which from that trailer it looked like they did, um, you know, I'm mm. quite excited. It was really funny because Nicola was kind of watching it with me. She was just playing Switch, um, and then suddenly you know, the she heard the orb, and that was it. She was like, oh, Crackdown, you know, <laughs> that was it. It was just <laughs> so it's it's, it's a universal sound of uh, of happiness. Yeah, well, well, maybe if it does launch in February next year, they'll they'll peddle it with a a Halo uh, Infinite, uh, you know, early access or beta or something, you know. Maybe, maybe they'll do that, sweeten everybody up a little yes. bit. Yes. Oh, I, th- I think I think I I I think that game is a long way <laughs> off. I would guess. Oh, yeah. Halo. If they just show it, if just, just go going from that trailer anyway. That, that trailer looks yeah. stunning, yes. absolutely stunning. Yes. But there was nothing nothing in there at all, was there really? Apart from you know the the brief glimpse of uh, the chief and a, a few soldiers, but there was there was nothing else to, to make you think that was an actual and some game. rhino thing. No. There was some rhino animal. Yeah, yeah, and oh yeah, the herd of rhinos, which yeah. looked great. And a big bit of tree bark, which looked yeah, even absolutely. Better. I thought it was kind of like a live action Viva Pinata. I was like, here we go, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting it. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I, th- I think that's a, ne- a next box game. I think yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but moving on to the next bit was uh, Sea of Thieves. Um, so I touched a bit about on the intro, but yeah, the um, the Hungering Deep is out mm-hmm. now. Uh, that's just come out with the Megalodon. Um, but obviously their pledge was to release six major con, three pieces of content this year, uh, with that being the first. Um, and then the Cursed Sails and Forsaken Shores are due up next. Um, with the Forsaken Shores adding um, adding new location, um, uh, that's that's one that expands it a little bit and brings a new location. So um, that's a described as a place of darkness where fish and ash consume all um, so yeah, what, what that will be, um, it'll be interesting to see but like you say, that excitement or that in, bit of interesting bit where you can go in and it changes every so often so you can do something mm. new all the time keeps it a little bit fresh, keeps it a little bit different um, so yeah, so that that was good to see, I think we we kind of already knew it was coming, but it's good to know or to see that it was, you know, it was coming in earnest and they are, you know, they are keen to, to focus on that to make sure it is coming out quite promptly, I think people are getting a little bit itchy um, about the Hunger in Deep because obviously they've, they've been out for a couple of months and nothing new would come out. But the Cursed Sales is due out in July, um, so next mm-hmm. month, um, and then the Forsaken Shores is due out in September. So between July and September, there's a little bit of a gap, but I think there'll be enough there if you know you've got these other two to keep you going. I think it's just that sort of game that you can come back to. You know, I don't think it needs to launch something new every month. Uh, you know, I think I alluded to this last time I was on that you can just play it, you know, for a few nights a week, just jump in, sail around, not really do that much, you know, get a couple of chests, you know, um, you know, complete a couple of voyages and, and, and that's it. But it's just a nice game to, to dip in and out of. So I'm, I'm happy that that is coming. Yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll see what, um, we'll see what it actually is more in depth at a later date. I'm Absolutely. Sure. I, I caught a, um, I caught an interview with Mike Chapman, um, on Inside Xbox. So in the Xbox are running kind of a daily thing. And they had, uh, they had quite an in-depth interview. And he was saying that the Forsaken Shores, which looks amazing, kind of brings that volcanic island. It's also going to introduce, mm. um, a rowboat. So it's going to because the the um, island the uh, volcano could erupt at any point and it could damage your ship. So you could be off kind of solving a puzzle, getting some loot, doing whatever you're doing, and your ship could be being destroyed by volcanic lava or lava rocks or whatever it is. So they you can moor your ship kind of out to sea or your galleon out to sea and use the rowboat to kind of go onto this uh, onto the forsaken shores. But it's also great if and then that that will then introduce the rowboat 
rowboat into Sea of Thieves. So if you're a one man crew, you can go and do your, uh, you can load up your your ship with uh, your sloop with with chests, and then you can put them into your rowboat and then row that to the island when you're cashing them in. So what they're doing is every single one of these content drops, like the Cursed Towers or the Forsaken Shores, they're they're offering new mechanics, but instead of just dropping mm. it in, it's kind of I think the way that Mike Chapman said on the Inside Xbox, he said they're celebrating the new content. So they're said so instead of just going, oh, here's a robo, it's like no, here's something that's integral to this this uh, this added feature. And the interesting thing was was they were saying that obviously we've got Cursed Sales and we've got for, for and Cursed Sales has um I think they have um enchanted cannonballs as well that can you fire onto a ship and then suddenly everyone's dancing or it makes your <laughs> ship heavy and your ship will then start sinking so you have to keep bailing it oh, out clever. so there's some real kind of real buggery things that are coming to 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 see a thieves yeah. and then so so again there's kind of some new stuff there and between cursed uh, cursed sails and forsaken shores they're also going to have weekly updates as well so there's some really good stuff that's coming and the team that did the hungering deep are now working on something that's going to come out after Forsaken Shores. So they're just rotating those teams around. And I just think this is, this is, this is how you do it. You know, this is, you know, Destiny, yeah. Division, all those guys. This is how you do it. This is how you keep your player base coming back um, again and again. It's a very, very clever way of doing it. The, the only thing I would worry about, and I think, I think Sheep sort of talks about it last week, is that as long as, you know, if I don't play this game for two months, as long as I can come back in and have access to those features somehow. Yes. Or they, or they, 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 they sort of clearly signpost the things that I need to get. Because what you don't want is for someone to not play it for six months and then, you know, suddenly they haven't got half the toys that everybody else has got. So as long as they can do that somehow as well, then it, this is a great way of doing it, I think. Like you say, it just keeps it fresh every week, every month. There's, there's, there's something yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. So, so oh, I'm just so excited for these. They're just like, really good content. So what was up next mm. after the Sea of Thieves? Um, after Sea of Thieves was Kingdom Hearts 3, um, which is something that I've been excited about for a very, very long time. Um, you know, we, We've known it's a thing for a very long time. Um, but yeah, we're still going to have to wait a very long time because it's out in February next year. Another one. <laughs> Um, so I was kind of hoping that would be the end of this year. Um, you know, the, the, we've, the more it's gone on, the, the more recently we've seen more and more gameplay footage and heard more about it in terms of the worlds that they'll have, you know, the sort of Toy Story world, that sort of thing. And then we saw that footage um, earlier show in the last year for it as well. So I was hoping that that would be this year. Um, but I'm happy to wait for, for February next year. But I can't deal with Sora's new voice. I'd, for anyone who's played the first two will know that Sora's voice has suddenly changed and got deeper. Um, so I don't know if they changed voice actor or I, I don't know what it is, but it's just not Sora. It's just not Sora. Uh, but, you know, I, I was happy with the footage that I saw. Um, you know, we saw a lot of Disney's Frozen mm-hmm. in there, a, a lot of Frozen, mm. um, which I don't mind. Uh, you know, I'll admit that I have seen Frozen probably more times than I should probably admit to, but... Um, <laughs> I'm happy with that, you know, that the Teen Parts worlds have always had worlds in there that are popular, not so popular, and a little bit bonkers, um, you know, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, how it works, you know, which characters you can take control of, you know, and, and the new power-ups that they've got as well, you know, the new special moves, the attacks, and the combat, so, well, be it, we'll have to wait till next year, so be it, um, but I, um, sorry, correction, it's January that it comes oh, right. out. Next year, not January next so year. So that's, yeah, that's one month yeah. before the. So it's one month before. Of games, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's when it starts. They open the floodgates with Kingdom Hearts. But yeah, um, I'm excited by it. I know it's not one that many people will be, but um, you know, to me, I, I played Kingdom Hearts when I was younger on the PS2, and I, and I loved it, and I still love it to this day. Um, I've still got my copies on my PS2 um, on here, hmm. uh, and I play that, and, and I love them. You know, they're the great games. I can you know, can easily see. 50, 60, 70 hours into them. Um, so, yeah, so I, I'm guessing it didn't get either of you two going. Do you know what? I was, I'm half tempted by it. I've never played any of those games, but this one, it just looks like it's had so much money thrown mm. at it because that, that footage looked absolutely stunning, to be honest, and all those mm. different licenses coming in. I, I I might try it. Yeah, I've, I've been put off by them before because they've been a little bit too, little bit too cartoony, a little bit too sort of childish looking for me. I think, but yeah. this one, 
I think the style looks slightly more grown up. Not obviously not completely grown mm. up, but it it just it looks different enough for me to for me to want to want to jump in and try it. I yeah, think. absolutely. I'm the same as you, Manny. I think I'd, there was something about this here. It's got Pixar as well. It's got kind of Toy Story, Monsters Inc. You know those mm. kind of those kind of movies. I was like, oh yeah, I wouldn't mind playing this. I wouldn't mind. It's, it's, it's kind of there as a I oh, wouldn't mind boomeranging this. You know, and kind of like and yeah. then playing it until <laughs> I kind of get have enough. But but it, I was really it was really interesting because when they announced that and the trailer was was fantastic and I really kind of enjoyed the trailer. I thought they were then going to say. Right, you know, um, the one and two and the HD remasters or remix or whatever they were called are now available. You know, and they will be available on Xbox because it's coming. This is the first time it's come to the Xbox. There's always been PlayStation. Um, so I was expecting that. You actually saw that over on the PlayStation conference, which we'll get to a bit later, uh, that they actually announced them as one package. Um, but they're not kind of bringing those out on Xbox, so which was quite interesting. Yeah, which is a little bit disappointing as well because, like you say, we've had, we've had the... Uh, the HD remasters on the PS3 and then in the PS4. It would be nice to get them on the Xbox as well, you know, because there will be a lot of people who inevitably who just played Xbox all mm. the time, what have ever played the previous ones on Kingdom Hearts as a game which you need to know what's going on. You know, you can probably enjoy that game as a standalone, but it will follow on from one and two and all the various little spin offs it's had across the, the DS, the you know, the Game Boy, the mobile, you know, that sort of thing. So there will be probably a lot of references in there that people will understand, so it would have been nice if we'd have got all those packages together, um, you know, because surely they, even if they didn't do give them a 4K, you know, bump, even if you just got the HD versions, the, you'd be able to put them on one disc, you know, or, or as much of them on one disc, or just the first, you know, one and two, you know, forget the the side, the, you know, the spin-offs, just put one and two on one disc and, you know, 20 quid, there you go, job's a good one, mm. done. Yeah. You know that that'd be nice. Yeah, absolutely. I thought that that would be perfect. I was expecting that. I was like, because you know, it is worth a punt if uh, if you if that game if that trailer kind of excited you. And like you say, you've always been over in Xbox or or other places. You haven't played on PlayStation. Then there's always a. It's always the first time for any for someone. Um, so I thought they would kind of mm. fill in the backstory. But maybe the game does something at the start that kind of fills in that backstory for you. You know, previously on Kingdom Hearts, yeah. and then there's four <laughs> hours of of building the set the scene. Yeah, cut scene. <laughs> yeah. So I've I've heard things about the Kingdom Hearts storyline that in, in terms of it's meant to be absolutely bonkers. Is that right, Steve? It's meant to just oh. be just lore, lore everywhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't played all the spin-offs. I've just followed... I've, I've played some of them, but I mainly just follow 1 and 2. And even then, if you just follow 1 and 2, there's there's so much going on, you know, to mm. different worlds, the Heartless, how they came about, and, you know, the, you know, the Disney involvement. You know, it's, it's mad enough that you've got Disney and Final Fantasy and <laughs> Pixar, you know, trying to tie that all together in itself. You know, is is hard enough, but then, like, say, you've got all the all the backstory. With, you know, like, say, with King Mickey going missing, and then the Heartless and Ansem, and oh, you know, the odd Disney villains and and whatnot. You know, it is there's enough going on as it is. There's enough going on. Sounds like you could do like a TV series or something just just to set you yeah. up. Oh yeah, yeah. They just did like a Netflix series. You know, yeah, that would be yeah, an, an an anime version, which that'd be quite good actually. Okay. Oh, pitch it. Yeah, they probably have done it somewhere in Japan, but probably not over in this country. But yeah, there's, there's enough in Kingdom Hearts to uh, to keep you going. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, moving on after that was the announcement that Microsoft was pretty much buying everybody. <laughs> um, the, we can win fans by buying fans. I think there's a philosophy there, but they um, <laughs> they announced that they were they were taking ownership of um, quite a few good studios actually to put under the Microsoft Studios umbrella to make them exclusive. Um, so they have bought Playground Games, who are behind the Forza Horizon series. Um, so they're they're retaining exclusive rights to that. Um, Hellblade developer Ninja Theory as well. I think that was quite a significant one. Uh, they'll they'll be exclusive to Microsoft now as well. Um, then there was the State of Decay developer Undead Labs, um, and we have a few developer Compulsion Games. Wow. Um, mm. So yeah, I think it was quite a, a bold move. Um, really, you know, to, to say this is what we're doing to, to try and ensure that Xbox is the best place to game. And I think that was, um, you know, I think that was quite a significant stride to doing that. Albeit, I don't necessarily agree that necessarily buying people is the best way to go about it, but, you know, to have those games on the Xbox, which people <coughs> kind of knock Microsoft for at the moment, that they don't have those exclusive titles, whereas Sony potentially do. That yeah. kind of now guarantees that they do have things to pull people in beyond the likes of Forza, Halo, Gears, that sort of thing. So 
it yeah. will offer something different um, and give those guys chance to work on something else beyond the games that they've already done. Yeah, um, I, I, I think this is definitely them ramping up to getting the new Xbox yeah. out in two years' yeah. time because they, they they must have learned from from this one. You know that they, they can carry on with the Xbox One, but the, the, uh, there's so much negative word of mouth about it. You know, not with not with gamers. You know, we, we're all sort of past that now, but. I, I would think there's so much negative word of mouth in it in terms of the public still that they have to launch something new, call it something different. And they've, I think they, I think they've learned because you know that that's been the one thing from 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 the start with the Xbox One is that they just haven't had enough content that's theirs, you know, mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. enough games that are just solely solely on that console. So I think this is them just saying, right, this this is where we start. You have got two years, maybe two and a half years, get some games ready for that launch. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think this this year's E3 kind of showed that in a little bit because they did a lot of announcing other people's games. Also, they, you know, they had a lot of premieres and it, you know some exclusive as well. But you know, the big ones were oh we'll put a Halo trailer in there and oh we'll put a bit of Gears in there. So you know, relying yeah. on the the big hitters that they do have. But <clears> like you say, come what, whenever the next Xbox might launch, if they can say right, well we've got five games by those five studios ready to go, mm. as well as the next Halo, the next Gears, or whatever it may be, you know, that yeah. will be a, a line-up to, to contest with from, from Sony and uh, potentially Nintendo. So, um, the other thing that they did uh, mention, they also introduced a new studio called The Initiative, um, which is headed by um, the ex-Tomb Raider boss, Daryl Gallagher. Um, so that'll be interesting to see what they come up with um, as well. Mm. So, albeit not, um, not necessarily any games announced by it, but what they can come up with as well. Um, that'll be interesting. Um, and a little, um, a little thing that it does say on the Eurogamer article as well is that on their report when they spoke to uh, Phil Spencer is that he didn't confirm or deny that Playground Games were working on a new Fable, but he did say they were working on an open world adventure game, which probably will be the next Fable or the renewed Fable, which hopefully is the case. I think we've discussed this on the podcast before that the fact that Fable is Fable is gone is a massive loss to Microsoft. Mm. Um, and I think it's a massive loss to gaming in general, really. Um, you know, obviously it went a bit downhill, uh, you know, with the mm. Kinect spin off and, you know, that sort of thing that happened. But playground games, I think Fable would be in safe hands. You know, yeah. they would be a very safe pair of hands to say, this is Fable, this is new, because they, they make open world stuff already. Um, you know, and this thing that they do produce looks stunning. Mm. So how did, incorporate that more into a sort of a fable themed world and a fable feel world you know in terms of that theme and how it looks that'll be interesting to see but um that tied with the games from those other guys for the, the next xbox will be something to look forward yeah. to yeah it's quite interesting because like when phil was saying about what kind of buying uh, playground games he did say that on like kind of on stage he goes and they're also working on an open world uh, game which we'll talk more about later and i kept thinking it was later in the conference mm. so every trailer that started i was like here we go it's fable you know every single trailer yeah. um and then when we got to the one at the end which we'll talk about at the end i was like this isn't fable you know and i was just like but it never came it never came they obviously kind of uh, maybe got that maybe that is also for the next xbox as well you know maybe playground games are kind of queuing that up you may you know you imagine kind of launching a new xbox in 2020 with fable master chief you know a new halo new fable it would just be incredible it'd be an incredible lineup the one thing i did find interesting about all of this um was similar to minecraft um we happy few is still coming out on playstation so the We Happy Few, which is a game that's kind of been in Xbox preview, is changing a lot now. It's getting to more of a game. It was a bit of a kind of a survival sim. It was a bit like Don't Starve uh, when I played it. Um, played the kind of um, the Games Pass, or not the Games Pass, the the ID and Xbox version. And but I noticed that this is still coming to this is still coming to PlayStation. So they're similar to Minecraft. They realized Microsoft realized that they can make even more money by releasing the same game on other platforms so it's good that they've got playground games because they don't want Forza suddenly being shopped around or Forza Horizon under a different name being shopped around to its competitor but it's good to see that they are sort of still sharing some of these games with uh, other platforms yeah I think they'd be they'd be mad if they mm. didn't to be honest like I say if, if they've got code there and it's not something that they want to keep as Xbox solely then yeah absolutely make money off it it's mad not to absolutely and that segues nicely into your next point Steve 
Segway! It does, <laughs> yeah, Segway, uh, Thomas Alert. Um, yeah, but um, we finally, finally, finally got some information about Forza Horizon 4. The speculation is finally finished about where it's going to be based. It's going to be based in the UK, of all places. Um, you know, I thought, as much as I love that it's going to be based in our country, I wasn't expecting that at all. You know, there was a lot of rumour and speculation and fake, you know, box arts and screens that are going to be in Tokyo or, you know, Canada or America or wherever, but as long as it's not set in the UK, as in there's going to be roadworks and traffic everywhere, Hot I holes. think it'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the road. Driving around Stoke on a rainy Sunday afternoon, it sounds brilliant yeah, to me, yeah, it sounds great. Some drivers, tractors everywhere, so, yeah. but yeah, the, the stuff that they showed that beautiful, yes. you know, there is, there's clearly going to be a lot of places across the UK that they are using to take inspiration from, you know, and it's... Yeah. It just looks stunning, you know, and, and the fact that it's going to be even more online than it was before. Um, you know, I think they, they said that there's going to be even more people online. Everyone shared the same world. No driver tars. Everyone that was in there would be actual players. Um, you know, so getting out there, meeting new people, meeting new gamers, new players, new challenges, that sort of thing. So it'll be interesting to see how that works, you know, and, and how, how many yeah. people that Anthony can annoy by crashing into them. <laughs> I'm you sorry. Know. Oh, that's what, that's going to be my yeah. number plate. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it used to be awesome yeah. in Forza Horizon 3. In Forza Horizon 4, it's just going to be, I'm sorry, because that's what they're going to You're just, yeah. just going to get that warthog and just drive it around non-stop again, aren't you, for about 20 uh, hours. Absolutely. We my Spongebob warthog. Beeping your horn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that was a, that's a cool thing. Yeah. So in, in an interview with uh, Dan Greenwald that has uh, kind of, uh, since the show, they did say there's going to be 74 people will be in your world so as you're playing so wow. it reminds me of like test drive unlimited do you remember test drive unlimited where you had that that yeah, hawaiian yeah, island yeah, yeah, back that in was the great. 360 days yeah, yeah that, there's been rumors that it's a similar sort of thing with this one isn't it so you, you can you're meant to be able to buy houses and garages and and, and such oh I think. That, they did show houses actually which is in halfway to being test drive unlimited 3 isn't it it basically. really is it's good because you used to be you could walk yeah. around couldn't you and was it what was it was it metropolis yeah. street racer where you had barns or was that one of the first was, to... I think they brought in stuff in PGR that two, I think, it. on the on the Xbox three sixty where you could walk around a garage yes. and you know, you could see a lineup of cars and then yeah, because that's where Geometry Wars came in. Do you remember there was a little arcade yes. cabinet in the corner that you walked up to, and then that started Geometry Wars. That was Wars. it. See, see, what they didn't really yeah. show in the trailer, they showed lots of open countryside. They showed your stomping ground, Manny, the Cotswolds. So we've got, they've, they've, mm. they're kind of, surprised you didn't see, I know the Cotswolds is a vast place, but I'm surprised you didn't see or hear of lots of cars, because there was a, yeah, I'm, I'm they, showed, they showed yeah. a thing where they had, I think recently, they had a, like, lots of really high performance cars in the Cotswolds. Um, so, mm. so, but that's, that's, uh, it is a venue yeah. for that, yeah. As long as you get the Cheltenham's, Cheltenham's Ring Road in there, I'll oh be very happy. Oh my god, that would be, be so cool. Um, yeah. What they kind of showed, they showed uh, Edinburgh, which was really cool. Yeah, that looked, yeah, great, that looked really cool. Because you notice, like, as soon as I saw that statue in Edinburgh, I was like, "This is Edinburgh. How cool is this?" And but I'm hoping that I guess there will there will be some London tracks as well. You know, you imagine just having London. It would be like um, again, it would be like Metropolis Street Racer all over again, won't it? It would yeah. just be. Oh, I just can't wait for this game. It looks, as you said, Steve, it looks absolutely stunning. And it's coming, as we discussed earlier, it's coming out on Game Pass, on Xbox Game Pass. So if, if you've got Game Pass, you know, there's, there's really no reason not to play it. Um, and thankfully, this is one of the games that's launching this year. Um, this is coming out on October the 2nd. Um, so that's that's avoiding, uh, that's booking the trend of uh, uh, January, February next year. But I was interested by the, the blimp idea as well, which basically is the public events like Destiny has and the, and the Division had that sort of thing, that if there's a blimp in the sky, everyone has to race to it and everyone's suddenly involved in it and it'll mm. be interesting to see because it was suggested that that sort of people racing and driving together and helping to achieve the objective will, you know, that will inevitably get the reward for everybody, so hopefully you don't get lumped with a, a group of Chessons that, you know, just in a, in a, you know, in a, in a Spongebob Warthog doing donuts and crashing into things and just ruining it for everybody but it'll be interesting to see what they are you know if they're just serious point you know point to yes point, um you know tasks or is there going to be something a bit you know you know try and ram each other off the road or you know something mm. different you know something interesting you know a bit of, bit of fun in there because obviously they've liked the, the last one where they had the um you know the hot wheels track are they going to mm. do something like that again or is it just going to be a more a serious online i know forza's forza horizons are less serious approach to the forza series but is it going to be more serious in terms of we had us fun with Forza Horizon 3, but now this is more, you know, more on the traditional vein of races. So that'll be interesting how that works. 
um, and how different mm. those point events actually yeah. are. Yeah, and also I guess one of the big changes that we've got in Forza Horizon Four is the seasons. So you know, in, mm. in, you know, yeah. we actually we do have seasons in the UK, um, and and you know, <laughs> you'll actually be getting that in the game, which is fantastic. So something like um, a a river in the spring or in the winter, which will be kind of you would be able to go near, you would crash into in the summer, gets lower tide, so it now becomes a racetrack. So you can now kind of use that river to now race around, and I just think things like that just sound amazing. And it's going to be they're going to trigger the seasons. For everybody so when you're in the game it's suddenly right it's autumn now and then you go into the game and you're playing forza horizon 4 in autumn i think this is amazing yeah. inc- i can't wait to see that in action you know that you get a tweet from playground games or something like that to say right which or, or some notification on the dashboard to say that autumn is triggering triggering in 10 days time mm. and then it just it happens in game yeah, Maybe it's as unpredictable as the weather in this country, though. <laughs> you know, it just well, you get like oh, a, like a shade airport. of grey or a yeah. different shade of grey or <laughs> yeah. a bit of rain or a, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I, as long as they as long as they keep doing things like that with these games, they can bring them out every year, and I will be absolutely happy because they always bring out enough new features in there to just just keep yes. it going with them. Oh yeah, this one this one looks stunning to be honest. I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, similar to your um, Metro Exodus being kind of one of your highlights. You know, no no shocker that uh, Forza Horizon Four was kind of one of mine. You know, just just seeing what they were doing because when it, you know you you saw when it, when you kind of figured that it was the UK, you were like, I'm happy with that. But then when you saw the different dynamics that are happening to the game, incredible. Um, and on to a, a, a sort of another segue, another online um, online world. Anthony will be able to don his, his beanie and his gilet in 4K as the Division <laughs> 2 um, set in a summertime Washington, D.C. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we, we've got a bit more information about the Division 2, uh, which is out in March next year. Um, so not, not quite February, but again, in that sort of same window. But I love that video. Yeah. What we saw on that Division 2, I love that. You know, the Division was all right the first mm-hmm. one i thought it was good it was okay but much like destiny was you know that that was just sort of like a, a teaser a test for future things to come i think by the looks of division two will nail mm. it and um, you know like destiny two kind of expanded on what destiny one did i think that was kind of what they were doing with the division um, mm. and i think that really showed in that video because that looked stunning and um, you know that looked really really good as well um so hopefully we'll get more of what the division did in terms of, because it was solid in terms of performance, but just wasn't that much to do. I think everyone would say the same, that it kind of got a bit samey and a bit boring. Um, mm. But with this new world and this new environment and, you know, this new sort of, the same setting in a, in a sense, but the new story behind it will be interesting to see what, what they bring that's new and to keep, to keep people coming back. But much like we did with Anthem last year, we had the sort of the fake party chat, didn't we, in terms of the people talking t- to each other and, and whatever, because <laughs> real people don't talk like that. You know, let's no, be honest, no. real people don't talk like that. Because Get out of my way! Go. Yeah, so, sorry, <laughs> to, yeah, sorry to be still again, Anthony, but yeah, he'll, he'll grenade himself or he'll grenade somebody else. It's, sorry! <laughs> sorry! Sorry! <laughs> sorry. You just get Matt star jumping uh, in the corner. I'm taking it off of me. Matt yeah, star jumping yeah. in the corner. It's like, Matt, come over here. But no, I just, I love this. And the fact that they've expanded it as well, haven't they, to eight players. So your squad yeah. is now where before it was four of us. You know, we the f- the three of us played a quite a lot of that. You know, we're kind of and you're right. There was a point where it just kind of tailed off. We suddenly went from who's up for the division tonight to kind of there wasn't it. You know, we just kind of came back for the major events. Um, but the division two will have eight players. So I just I really like that. I just think that's a great idea because before you know, obviously these games where you're kind of constrained to just four. If you've got a bigger group like we have, like the Sparks, it's hard to just kind of you know a couple people have to kind of sit sit by the wayside while the others kind of have fun and stuff so it's quite nice having a, a bigger group or being able to kind of match a couple of groups up so this is i quite like this i'm really looking forward to the division yeah i like the look at some of the new weapons Jeez. as well you had that little that little mine that sort of scuttled across the floor through the through the water and stuff and then blew up i know they had the, the seeker in the first one but this one looked like a little jet propelled version of that there are there are a few other little bits in there as well like um there's uh there seems to be a weapon where you can fire it at someone's feet and sort of freeze them for like oh, 10 wow. 20 seconds that that looked ace as well 
Yeah, I could just see you getting stuck yes. with that one, Anthony, and everybody trying to shoot you out <laughs> repeatedly. I'll shoot him <laughs> the wrong person. You're like, just leave yeah. him, just leave him, just leave him. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> just lock him there. Sorry, it we'll happened again. Yeah, and there was the guy in the trailer yeah. in the big suit that you had to kind of shoot different parts of his armour off. So he had that big kind of, that big suit mm. that they use once in uh, Modern Warfare. I love that suit, you know, and they kind of, uh, so he's hankering around in the middle of that area, which is kind of a downed Air Force One, wasn't it, that they were kind of about to go Mm. So yeah. yeah, no, I I really like the look of that. And the end of that trailer as well, where they start getting shot through the windows, and then they said, "Oh, it's time to set by the Capitol." I'd be interested to see if that was just for, for the show of the trailer, or if things can happen in sort of a, a dynamic, in a dynamic scenario. Like you could be doing something, but then you suddenly get sprung by a, you know a, a group of you know bandits or you know a, a gang or something and that takes you on to something else you know like a sidebar quest you know to suddenly say mm. well we're doing this but we've got attacked by these guys or if that's part of the story or it, like I say, it was just for sure but it'll be interesting what it builds up to if that sort of big finale that that was alluding to is actually a thing mm. or not yeah did um, they say anything about um like uh the dark zone multiplayer and stuff from the first one did they say about anything about that coming back or no. whether that was integrated into no this? no not from what i saw no They'd be crazy not. I hope yeah, they'd be back. crazy not to add it. Surely, you know the the dark zone yeah, becomes battle definitely. royale. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love the dark zone. The, you know the times that we went into the dark zone and we were just you know gathering all of that equipment, calling for the the, the you know the helicopter to come in and grab us and stuff. They they were just mm. some of the most fun and intense moments as well. You know it was incredibly yeah. intense. You know, and that was just that mad scramble when the helicopter actually did drop to try and attach the stuff. It was yeah. just incredible. Yeah, mm. if they could, if they could sort of weave that into the world a little bit more mm. this time, so you don't, it's not just maybe like a, a roped off zone. Maybe it's you know, if they made it part of the map that you had to travel through to get to your single player missions or something, mm. that could be really good. I'm, I'm hoping that that's a, that's that's where they sort of take it. I think mm. integrate it a bit more, um, and then we'll we'll try and fly through these because there's quite a little bit more to go on on the Xbox One, but. I'm not interested in this, but there was a new snow map coming to PUBG this winter, um, which I know there's, you know, PUBG's been quite popular on the Xbox since it launched on, on the PC. Um, so again, another, the, the, probably one of the first instances of Battle Royale mode. I know that's still quite, it's got a, it's quite a, a following on, on the Xbox and Twitch and what the like. So, so yeah, that, that's good to see that they are still bringing things out to it, albeit that the game's still not technically a finished product. Um, you know, it is still in development. Uh, in quotation marks, but yeah, to get new content for it, I think that's that's quite good that they are they are supporting it. Um, so mm. for those that are playing PUBG still, I don't know if you guys are still playing it or not, but it'll be interesting to see if that brings more people uh, or re re you know rebuilds the excitement around it or not. Yeah, because mm. you've got the desert map as yeah. well. I quite like that trailer. I thought that trailer was mm. quite was quite cool as they kept kind of there was almost kind of just traveling through the different environments and then it had the name yeah. I thought it was quite a cool and effective trailer yeah i need to i need to get back into it actually because I've, I've i stopped playing it after the first couple of weeks because it was you know it, it was just running so so badly mm. on xbox one x that i just i just didn't want to play it but i've heard they've patched it a lot since and it's running a lot better so yeah it might be might be a good time to jump back in i think maybe have a, have a session and try out those new New maps, new features, and uh, get shot and die a lot. <laughs> get a chicken dinner. We come a hundred. Mm. Yeah, we came second once, didn't um, we, Manny? I think we came second. Yeah, we came we did, second yeah, as a group. Yeah. It was quite so. cool. We was almost there. It was so close. Yeah. Almost. I, I tell you what, one of the first times that I played Fortnite about a month ago, I managed to win. I think it was my second game, wow. and I won it firing a single shot that missed somebody, but because they were outside of the circle at the end of it, uh-huh. I won. It was great. <laughs> I, so I, you, I you won by hid. default. Yeah, I, I hid all the way through it, fired a single shot, missed, and won. Brilliant. It's my that kind of game. Just, that is yeah. just genius. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and moving on to the next bit is we've got a couple of game announcements for the Game Pass. Mm-hmm. So Fallout 4 is coming to Game Pass, the Division's coming to Game Pass, and Elder Scrolls Online is coming to Game Pass. So I think that's quite a, a fair offering, really. I mean, I don't think there's anybody that hasn't played either of those three games, um, but still, they're three good games that come out, um, you know, that are coming to it. So. I think I'll, um, I'd, I'd briefly, ever so briefly dabbled with Elder Scrolls Online when it first came out, so I might, with it being free, I might get that back, uh, you know, re-download mm. it and, and try it again, um, just to fill that kind of Elder Scrolls void um, that's there at the moment. Um, and then jumping kind of back to what you said earlier, Anthony, is that we got an um, announcement that Cuphead um, is getting some new content as well um, next year. So content-wise, we're getting an expansion 
in the delicious last horse, um, so which brings out a new a new character, which the Miss Chalice is that right? I think so. Yeah, um, Cuphead's going to be Miss a Chalice. Yeah, Cuphead's going to be a thruple, yeah. and there's this like <laughs> a thruple. Is that a technical? I term? think it is. Yeah, I don't think I made that up. I think it is. It's like. <laughs> A threesome that's that's married. That. So yeah, though you got like um. So yeah, you got Mugman Cuphead, and then was it Miss Chalice? Did you say Steve? Yeah, Miss Ch- Miss. Well, it's MS. So I don't know if you call it Miss or Ms. Ms. Chalice. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um new new weapons, new bosses. Um, Chef Salt Baker um is the new boss. Um, but yeah, new charms and a bunch of new abilities. Curtis of Miss Chalice. Apparently, she's the the grantor of abilities. Um, so that's coming out next year. I don't think we've got a precise date for it yet. No. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's coming next year. But I, I've not played Cuphead because, like you said, it, it's too hard for me. It's, it's far too difficult for me. So I've, if it comes on, on Game Pass or it's on, on an offer at some point, I'll probably will, will dabble. Because I, I love that aesthetic. I love how it looks. You know, the, the art style of it looks fantastic. You know, so, um, is that, is that, was that 4K that? Or has it had a 4K bump at all that? Or is it? Just as it was when it launched. Or... I think it is 4K, even though the art style is very kind mm. of old school art style. I think it is like 4K. I think it is mm. enhanced for Xbox One X. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it just looks it looks stunning. I love that art style. I wish there was a really easy mode in Cuphead because I just <laughs> really enjoy that game. It's just so good. And also, kind of back to kind of Game Pass as well, and like hoping that this does. I mean, if this goes into Xbox um, Xbox Game Pass, so what? So many people will play it. But also coming later this year, they announced that the Master Chief Collection as well is coming into game is coming into Game Pass, and I thought that was just you yeah. know like as you said, you know Game Pass is just getting better and better because having that as well, that's a, that's a really good game if you want to get into uh, Halo. Well, yeah, you're getting what five, four or five games for in, in one package for yep. effectively eight pounds for the month. Um, mm. So you know, even if you bought the month just for that alone, just to play all the Halo games again, then yeah, you know. You've got more than your money's worth there, haven't you? Yeah, so, indeed. Albeit there will significant downloads for it, but just on a just yeah. on a side note on that, really weirdly, um, they've just activated a beta for that as well. So I, I just signed up for yes. it yesterday, but I, I have no idea what it's for, or what they're going to be changing, and what they're doing. But if if you're interested, there's a beta going for the Master Chief Collection that you've got to sign an NDA for as well. So it sounds like it's something big, but I've, I've it's no really idea. bizarre. Maybe that's maybe that's the battle royale. Maybe yeah, you could actually be spot on. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of my prediction for last week is that they would add that. I kind of jumped off the back of IGN's prediction, but no, absolutely. You know, maybe that would be exactly mm. what they're going to do because that would make sense in that. I know they're bringing out um, enhanced HDR 4K, aren't they for 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 the collection? Yeah. So I doubt if it's going to be that. Um, so it has your way. It has to be something quite significant. Yeah, mm. I, if I, I was just going to say, uh, as soon as I find out, I'll let you know. But I realised I can't because I signed the NDA, so I, I won't let you, you know. You can blink yeah. if we say, "Is it? Is it Battle yeah. Royale, Belly?" You can blink really hard. <laughs> yeah. I, I promise cannot I won't confirm or deny. Yeah. yeah, that that always means yes. <laughs> yeah. We don't speculate on rumour. That always means yes. Yep, yeah, that's that's what I'll go with. Um, then moving on to uh, Devil May Cry Five. Uh, yes. we, we had a Devil May Cry 5 announcement which I thought looked quite good actually um, you know I'm not a massive uh, DMC fan but I thought it looked quite cool that trailer um, you know and we can, you can always rely on Capcom to have some sort of crazy you know Japanese infused shooter come RPG you know some sort of mash em up you know so I thought it looked like, quite cool um, you know I, I know the kind of with the Devil May Cry series, I know they kind of went a bit off piece in terms of Dante changing appearance and, you know, changing voice and all that business, but I can quite get into mm. that. You know, I, I, from from what I saw, I, I, I quite like that trailer. Um, you know, and, and they, they focused quite a lot on Devil May Cry 5. You know, they brought the, um, his name slips now, but they brought the, the main developer out, you know, and, and the, the guy that I didn't really like, which I think we all agreed on in the WhatsApp group. I think we all found him a little bit full oh, on. He was intense, um, wasn't he? He was just like, yeah, he was really <laughs> intense. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, like, yeah, you I will love this he game. may or may not have been coked up. I'm not entirely sure. Because, <laughs> um, but... yeah. Might have to snip that bit. <laughs> yeah. I think he loved uh, Devil May Cry 5 from life itself. But it, Yeah, mean, his, his eyes were very yes. red, but anyway. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to see somebody passionate about about the game. Um, but they're, mm. they're, I think they made quite a big deal about Devil May Cry. I think they, I think that was kind of their acceptance that maybe four lost its way a little bit, and there's been a bit of an absence since. But um, but yeah, I liked what I saw. Um, you know, and, and I definitely um, definitely played that. Mm. Like I said, Capcom games are usually fairly reliable and fairly good. 
Um, mm. So um, I, I'm happy to give it a whirl, you know, and, and, and see what it does. But, but yeah, um, crazy, crazy stuff on Capcom as normal. Um, then a Battle Toads game was announced speaking after that. Speaking of crazy um, stuff, that was a it shocker, really wasn't it? Yeah, speaking of crazy stuff, yeah, which was just kind of a little teaser trailer, wasn't it? You know, a, a very, very slight tease that it's coming out. You know, a new one's coming mm. out. We didn't get much beyond that. Um, you know, we didn't, I don't think we had an indication of, you know, time or date and so when it's coming out, but it's a thing. Um, so yeah, like I say, speaking of crazy, um, I think oh, actually it's due next year, um, but when next year? Very vague. It's next year mm. yeah. um, announcement. So that's one. That's one of those games that's been rumored for so long. It, mm. it had to happen yes. at some point. But yeah, it, it sounds like it was a total shock to even those people that maybe should have known about it because no one seems to have known no, about it at no. all. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so no gameplay, no nothing. Just a uh, it's happening. So that'll uh, we'll surely we'll get some more information at some point later this year at some stage. Um, mm. But something that I wasn't expecting was just cause four. Um, which I, I love the just cause, just cause games. You know, I, I played Just Cause three probably too much. Uh, <laughs> there's just something about that world and that running around and blowing things up and that having that grapple hook to swing around under helicopters and fly around the world. You know, it's just something different. You know, it's just something mm. else that Square offer. Um, so yeah, I wasn't expecting that, but as soon as I saw the trailer kick in, you knew what it was. You knew it was yeah. Just Cause instantly. Um, but that I'm so excited to see that because if Just Cause Three was beautiful, you know, it, you know, if I remember rightly, playing that game is that back on the 360 now? Um, Just Cause Three, I think it was, wasn't it? Um, mm. But seeing that world, uh, you know, that South American set, setting brought to life on the Xbox One X, that that has to look superb. You know, that has to look yeah. nice. You know, with the explosions. You know, the open world setting. You know, having all the vehicles. The just, just obviously there's destruction in there as well. Um, you know, kind of a bit like Battlefield in terms of level buildings and things like that. That with the Xbox One X has to look mm. beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. You know, so. Um, I like that they just keep going crazier and crazier with, with that series as well. It's like yeah. we've gone from one tether to two tethers. Now we've now we've got three. Now we've got four. That, yeah. That's it. Just keep yeah. ticking it off on that whiteboard every single version. Yeah. Five Tied. tethers. Six tethers. <laughs> Tie five helicopters together, and, and that'll be fine. But yeah, yeah. And, and and that's out this year. You know, that's out in December. You know, that's the the first I've certainly heard about it. You know, in, in yeah. terms of coming out and to, I know it still seems a long way away. But going from June to December, you know, consider we've heard nothing about it. That's quite short. Mm short sort of window in terms of it's coming out yeah, in the next six months you yeah. know so they've done well to keep that under wraps I think um, or keep it keep it hush hush anyway um, but certainly that's something that I'll be jumping onto um, because that'll be something a little bit different because inevitably around the November December time we'll have Battlefield, Call of Duty, that sort of thing so I think just cause fits itself nicely in there that it is another shooter but something different at the same time um, and then Going back to something a little bit crazy and a little bit weird, um, <laughs> we got something. We got Gears Five, but then we got Gears Pop as well. <laughs> which... Never have I been more disappointed in anything in my entire oh, life. So... Yeah. Just... When I saw that Gears logo, I was like, "Yes!" And then I saw the bobble head. I was like, "Oh my god, no. what have they done? <laughs> Bloody Funko!" Why? Why? I'm so I'm so glad <laughs> there was two other. I'm so glad there were two other Gears announcements because if that's all there was, yeah. I would have yeah. just rage quit at that point because I was yeah, just absolutely. I was just when I saw that when it kind of cut through, I thought they're just announcing that they're doing Gears bobbleheads. That's it. They're just doing Gears Funko. That's okay. That's okay. But when it was actually mm. a game and a game on mobile as well, I was just like, "Oh." <laughs> the mother of love but you know it's just like they haven't released any details about it just that it's coming no. is it later this year is it later this year or is it next year i think so it was one of those things where they almost look like you know, we just need to get this yeah. out of the way so that let's just give it one minute get it on stage and just quick swift it is gears five really. <laughs> but you just you just look like you needed to get off that as quickly as possible i mean i'd be interested to see what they actually do with it to see what it's like say it's a mobile game so obviously it can't mm. be anything too expansive or you know Sort of far reaching, but it just seems mad, mm. you know. And, and whether this is the start of, let's say, Funko Pops taking over the world, you know, I, I mean, I, I collect pops, you know, I, I collect pops that I, I like in terms of the, from the series that I like, but seeing them go into sort of video games and whether that not ties into sort of TV series or something, I, I don't know, but. Where it's I've, I've go, just got I've this. No I've got this image of somebody just dragging the finger across a mobile screen to like chainsaw a Funko <laughs> Pop in half or something. Yeah, 
That 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 I would actually wow. play. I think. Yeah. That's going to be diet a dark toilet time when you're playing with that on the mobile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only time you play mobile games. All, all my toilet times are dark, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, superb. Um, uh. m- moving swiftly on, um, <laughs> then there was uh, Gears Tactics as well, yes. uh, which was a sort of a turn-based strategy XCOM style game, which I think that could work. Um, you know, I think that that would be quite interesting, sort of like say X Com, come Halo Wars style sort of thing. I think that, I think the Gears universe lends itself to that. Um, you mm. know, so I'd be interested to see how that works out. Um, and, and I think I'd actually give that a go because I'm, I'm not the biggest Gears fan. Um, you know, I'm the, the first to admit that. But in that sort of setting, I'm, I'm like you, Anthony. You know, people, the you know, the naysayers say that sort of RTS games can't exist on the consoles and that sort of thing. But if, if that can be, you know, successful, successful out in four. That then I think it'll give gears something else uh, beyond the, the the shooter, the shooter um, sort of camera angle and, and the pop because the pop's not going to happen. Yeah. We'll just forget the pop mm. ever happened. You know, it gives something yeah. different to gears to to be able to go on. So and, uh, and that's yeah, that was that was quite that's been developed by Splash Damage um, and Splash Splash yeah, Damage are the guys who did Brink. Do you remember Brink? Mm. That was like I remember. I remember yeah. going to a Eurogamer, mm. and yeah, Brink yeah. was all over Eurogamer, and it was like it was the future of the. And that was such a it was such mm. a great demo playing Brink at Eurogamer. Then you kind of got the finished product home, and you kind of realised that it wasn't that great. But it was just. But yeah, so it's being developed by them. But I'm not sure. I don't know if either of you guys know that is um, Gears Tactics. Is that PC only? Or is it PC console? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they really said, did they? I, I mean, I, may, I missed that. And I'm just quickly reading up on it now in, in terms of this article. I can't say anything about it just being PC. Um, so, whether, I mean, I'd hope it's not. I mean, I'd hope it does come to the Xbox as well in terms of cross-play. Um, you know, if, if they do that way, if you get it on, on the Xbox, you get it on the PC and vice versa. Hmm. Um yeah, that's ah, quite there we nice. go. So Gears Tactics will be a Windows 10 exclusive. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. getting its own PC only tactics game. Yeah, so this is going to be PC oh. only. Yeah, mm. that's a shame that because I thought they sort of nailed it with Halo Wars yes. 2. You know, the, the pad worked really well. Everything mm. worked in, in that in that scheme. So I'm surprised they're going to they're going to stick 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 mm. with it on PC. Mm. Whether or not that'll change, that'll be interesting to yes. see. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll. I mean, for the PC crowd, it'll be great in terms of it, it'll work better with the mouse and keyboard, but. Yeah, it'd be nice to have it on on the Xbox as well. Sorry about that, Steve. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's disappointing. Sorry, um, sorry, <laughs> sorry, um, sorry. Uh, but yeah, then we had Dying Light Two, um, which which was um, which came afterwards, which I thought was quite cool. I thought it was quite nice. Yeah, actually. yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't think Dying Light quite got the reception or the exposure that it maybe was due. Um, I think it kind of got lumbered with the oh, it's another zombie survival game. Um, you know, because I think it kind of came out that sort of time, didn't it? You know, with Dead Island and Dead Rising and that sort of thing. But yeah, the the sort of I think I sort of tweeted this at the time or mentioned it in the WhatsApp group at the time in terms of they made a big deal about choices will be more significant, which we've heard time and time again, year after year after year, that your choices have consequences. They do matter, um, but they showed two different scenarios where, depending on what choice mm-hmm. you made, the game played different ways. Yes. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if there's more than just it'll be one or the other, or how permanent those changes will be. Um, you know what effects they have later down. If that's a genuine, you know, genuine side effects or consequences, rather than just saying there's just two story arches that kind of you know overlap each other. Um, but yeah, the the sort of the nighttime hook with you know with the dying light has always been its kind of its main feature. That the zombies become more powerful at night at night time. So. It'll be interesting to see what what new zombies they can offer, what new mechanics they can offer, because that's kind of kind of tying into Brink actually. The, the part core aspect of Dying Light was one of its USPs as well, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Absolutely. It was really cool just to see that. It was kind of all about kind of water, wasn't it? It was like, do you share the water mm. with your community? You grow your community, everyone's stronger, you can keep zombies out, or do you put it on the black market and then that starts attracting bandits? And it's just, it was really interesting to see how the world changed based on that decision. I thought it was quite, quite uh, clever. Yeah. Like I say, whether those decisions have like different consequences beyond like the sort of the main story, but like I say, with, with the water scenario, with, if you decide to put it on the black market, does that then stem side quests? You know, can you, you know, get water for the sort of the bandits that, you know, the, the bad guys or the good guys? Can that lead to things later down the line? Can you get that 
back, you know, that sort of thing. So I know it's hard in a game to get those sort of, you know, sort of, sort of those consequences in and, you know, have the multiple sort of channels and, and arches, but it'll be interesting to see how expansive they actually are. Hmm. Um, but yeah, and then, and then the, probably my most exciting uh, announcement of the, of the whole E3 actually. <laughs> Uh, cer- certainly of, of the uh, the Microsoft conference was Cyberpunk 2077, which just I think shocked everybody and blew everyone away that you know because I think it was kind of that little we we touched on it a couple of weeks ago that oh then there's one more thing yes. that kind of ended the conference there didn't it that he was rounding it off and then it interrupted like the the hacker sort of thing that, you know that that came in and then that just came out of nowhere which I thought that was that was quite good actually I thought that worked quite well you know I think these things kind of look a bit sort of disjointed but I thought that was kind of a bit of a seamless transaction there but it you know it yeah. it, 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 it worked. Yes. Um, I, I I was I was convinced it was Watch Dogs three before really? I started yeah. talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean and it, you would think that, you know, from from that you know, from what Watch Dogs has done in the past, but I love love the look of Cyberpunk twenty seven so I thought yeah. that look brilliant. You know, obviously I, if we've not seen much about it more it's just sort of cinematics, but it's yeah. C D project red. I, it has to be I'm, good. I'm not sure it's coming out on this generation of consoles, though, because it looks that good that mm. I can't see it. I can't see that being an Xbox One X game, even because it just looks looks a step further on than yes. that. I would say there's a couple of yeah. games throughout the entire conferences that you just looked at them and just thought, "This is next generation," you know. This is this is next yeah. gen stuff. There was a, there's one we'll get to a bit later, and I was just like, "No, this is next gen." You know, this is this isn't mm. this generation. Um, but no, that was really cool. So was that the whole? I guess that finished the uh, the Xbox conference. Yeah, that that rounded it off nicely. Um, you know, and and I, it, there was some sort of brief mention about the the, the development team were working on um, the next Xbox, which was inevitable because they'll always be working on it. You know, there's always going to be somebody mm. somewhere working on it, so it won't come as any shock to anybody that they're actually working on it. Uh, there was mention more about obviously Game Pass bringing more out to Game Pass, and then interestingly about playing Xbox games on your mobile device as well, um, which I thought was quite interesting. That obviously you can do the, um, you know, you can you can play the games remotely on the Surface tablet. So whether or not that's going to come to sort of iPad and Android, that sort of you know iOS, whether that happens or not, that'd be quite cool. But um, they're clearly focusing yeah. on the future. You know, they clearly they got their eyes on the future in terms of what what they need to do next. Mm. It's one of those things that they could they could probably do relatively not easily because obviously these things are always tough to to actually make. But Steam have done that in the past couple of months. They brought out their their streaming app for for phones, and I was I was playing with it last week, and it works works pretty really? well actually. Mm. Even across Wi Fi, you, you can't you can't tell there's lag. You know, you can hook up a Bluetooth pad to it. So as long as you've got an Android phone, you you could hook up a PS4 pad, Xbox pad, doesn't matter, and just stream it from your PC. And yeah, it works surprisingly wow, that's well. That's really cool. Mm. That's really cool. Because mm. the... yeah, I mean, it gives. Go on, go on Steve. After you. No, I was just going to say for for people who don't necessarily have five TVs in the house like you do, Anthony. You know, if you want to play, you know, play on your phone in bed or while somebody's got the TV, you could just play on an iPad or a mobile mobile device. It, it yeah. gives you know, albeit a, a tiny tiny screen, yeah. but if it like say if there's no visible lag and, and the quality of the stream is good, you know, it's, it's a Serves a purpose, it really it? does. It really does. I was just about to go. How yeah, dare you? Sure. Five TVs, and then I counted. I was like, "No, actually, yeah, there are five TVs in this house." <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got eight. But let's, let's keep yeah, quiet. Let's just move on. Move on. And then, oh so that God. was so that was on Sunday, and then early hours um, of uh, Monday morning, uh, ridiculously early if you're in the in the UK and Europe. Um, we had Bethesda. Manny, do you want to kind of kick through that? Yeah, yeah, we can probably whip through a lot of this fairly quickly because some of the games we've talked about in previous conferences, plus uh, I'm, I'm just realising we've got about another four conferences to go and we're, we're, <laughs> we're an hour and a half in already. Um, yeah, so did you guys watch this one at all? Or did you did you watch it the next day? I, I caught up the next day. I had work. I woke up. I set yeah. my alarm for two o'clock, woke up, put my headphones on and was watching on my iPad and fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so this was probably my favourite conference, I think. Out of, out of all of them, it was yeah. it was high quality. It was very fast. They showed a ton of stuff there, which was great, and they they just kind of got on with it, which, which was nice. Um, so they sort of um, they kicked off with a performance from Andrew WK, if you remember him from nineties and two thousand hits, <laughs> such as uh, Party Hard and so right. on and so forth. Like a, he's a he's a long haired rocker, and Steve's face right now is the face of everybody <laughs> in the crowd because <laughs> nobody knew who the hell he was. It was the most bizarre thing I've seen. I think um, so. Yeah, he he came out on stage. Played a song, everyone was baffled, but it turns out that was a way of leading into 
a bunch of footage of Rage mm. 2. Um, so his songs, I think, play quite a prominent part in the marketing, so that, that's that's why they sort of had him there. Um, so yeah, they had a couple of uh, couple of devs on stage from Avalanche who came out and showed a bunch of gameplay footage from it. Um, and it looks kind of great, actually. I was surprised by it, because I quite like the first game. Um, but this is taking it in a much more much more colourful direction. Um, so the, the first game had this kind of this tone of anarchy about it that you know the, the 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 game logo was the anarchy sign and so on and so forth. But it, they never really leaned into it that much. But this game um, is definitely going for it um, because it's it's colourful, it's vibrant. The um, the sort of uh, the weapon the weapons look really good. There's a bunch of mad stuff in there with to do with physics, which looks great. Um, and obviously, it's the same engine that powered um, Mad Max. I don't know if you've played yes. that. Yeah, previously. the Avalanche. Is it Avalanche yeah, so engine it, or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So it, it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, it's one of those games that I was quite surprised by because I wasn't sure what they were going to do with it. Um, but I think I, I really like the sort of direction that they've uh, taken it in. It's not taking itself seriously at all. So yeah, we had Rage Two, and then we moved on from there. To something else, I'm just looking at my notes. Doom. Okay, so the next, the next one was Doom. Um, they showed the trailer, and uh, it was very clearly the Doom Two remake kind of thing because they showed the yes. Hell on Earth part of it. You know, you see, you see skyscrapers on fire, and it's very much, very much set on this planet. Um, looks very much like the first game, same sort of thing, same, same kind of art style. And then they surprised everybody by not calling it Doom Two. Uh, instead, they called it. Oh, they called it uh, Doom Eternal. Where are we? Doom Eternal. Yeah. So, but it is basically a remake of Doom Two: Hell on Earth. Which I don't, I don't know why they've changed yes. the title on that one. It's bizarre. Did either of you guys play the first, oh, first I game? I love that all? so much. I played that on yeah. uh, Xbox. I think I played that on. Uh, yeah, I played it on Xbox, and it was just incredible. I also gave it a whirl on the Switch as well. Um, but I played through and finished mm. it on Xbox, and I just absolutely enjoyed every moment of it. It's such a great game. Yeah, yeah, it, it was fantastic, especially because it ran at mm. sixty frames a second as well, so it was just butter smooth everywhere. This one looks very much, very much um, the same sort of tech, so I, I, it, it's going to yes. run really well. Uh, I love the I love the thing with Doom where you had to kind of get in close. You couldn't just shoot. You had to mm. you had to get in close. You had to melee, um, do kind of special moves in order to keep keep your health kind of running and i just really enjoyed that i thought it was really it was a really good mechanic that you really kind of it was one of those games where when you started playing you didn't want to play anything else because you really got into that groove you got into that kind of doom groove yeah. and i just i can't wait for more of that it's just going to be it's going to be great fun yeah it had that really good flow didn't it because you really did like i say you had to run up and punch people to get your health yes. back so it, you were just flowing from one from one person to the next person to the next person to flow them all kind of like a batman yes. game actually almost you're just switching from one to the next to the next yeah yeah, hopefully they'll they'll carry on with that. So from there, we moved on to the Elder Scrolls Online, um, which I wasn't particularly interested in, but then I re- I remembered it was on uh, the Xbox Game Pass now, so I might be tempted to actually right. jump into this and just just try it. Uh, so they announced two new two new DLC packs for it, which are coming later this year. One of them called Wolf Hunter, and the other one called Black Marsh. Um, unsurprisingly dealing with uh, dealing with wolves mm-hmm. mostly and then a bunch of sort of heavy lore for the, for the second one I don't really know much about the Elder Scrolls online lore I know, I know it's vast there's a vast tome of it to be honest with this it probably means lots to yes. some people but they were going pretty me. crazy at the conference uh, weren't they when they kind of announced all of this so yeah they were just... apparently that, that game is meant mm. to be really good apparently it's meant to have started off a little bit rocky but now it's meant to be quite a decent MMO, so I, I could be tempted. Maybe, maybe we should yes. all try it. Actually. Yeah, it's on Game Pass, on isn't Game it? Pass. So that gives us no excuse. Yeah, we should, we jump, should in jump in and just kind of <laughs> discover together. Yeah. Uh, where did we go from there? After that, we went to I think Quake Champions right. briefly. Um, just sort of, just kind of letting people know that game was still there. I think because <laughs> it's not been covered a lot. Um, they moved swiftly on from that. They just sort of had the devs out, just saying it's still there. You can still play it. We're still making changes to it you know they've got their esports scene that's still happening around that game so it's kind of it's again it's probably it's probably one of those things that uh, a bunch of people got very excited about but unfortunately not me because I've, I've never tried it um and from there we moved on to something that i was excited about which was a new mm. wolfenstein campaign so this is kind of like a pseudo sequel almost to wolfenstein 2 it's, it seems like it's I, I would guess it started as like a dlc pack but then they probably figured they had something special on their hands and branched out to a, a full game so it's going to be called uh, Wolfenstein Young Blood, uh, and it's going to be set in the 1980s with BJ Blazkowicz's mm. two daughters as the lead lead characters on it. Um, I'm very excited by that because I 
I absolutely loved Wolfenstein yes. 2, as I previously, men- previously mentioned on the uh, the pod. So anything that they give me in, in that world, I will absolutely lap up. I think I think it's 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 great. Um, did you play it at all in the end, Anthony? Because I know you attempted. To I, play did, it, I did. I did. I played it. I just thought I thought it was fantastic. I didn't finish it, unfortunately. Um, it's one of those things. It's I, I bought it, but I didn't. I haven't finished it. So it's one of those ones I really want to continue playing, especially if this game leads on to the next you know so yeah. i think it's definitely kind of maybe before this comes out i'll kind of jump back into wolfenstein and finish it i think i've only i'm probably about three quarters of the way through yeah it's worth seeing it because those last three levels are, are stunning really? really really good oh yeah do say we move sort of swiftly on from there into uh prey hmm? so they came and detailed a bunch of uh bunch of new updates that were going to uh, going to come out of that game before the end of this year that's one of the nice things that they do actually is sort of um that this that this lot do and Ubisoft do as well is that they do they do support the games for sort of yes. long long periods of time afterwards. Yeah. So it's nice to see that game getting new updates and DLC, extending the life. Uh, again, it's one of those games that I wish I had time to play because I've heard good stuff about it, but I've just never never had the chance to sort of delve into it. Um, and then from there, we moved on to Fallout Shelter, which is being released on PS4 and Switch. And I had no idea that that game was as popular as it was. Because they were talking millions and millions of players. Yeah, I yeah. remember. I remember trying it for the first couple of days, and then thinking it's all right. But you've, it's one of those things. It's like any kind of free to play phone game, isn't it? You mm. sort of play it for a couple of days, and you're like, eh, I'm done. <laughs> did, did Did you guys get into it at all? Or I think I was the yeah, same I as you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think when it came out, because yeah. it came out on uh, not last year, year before, um, on Bethesda's conference where they said, and this is out. That here's a new game, Fallout Shelter, and it's out now. Um, so I think, yeah, I think I played it kind of while during E3, and then yeah. just hadn't played it again. But I was very tempted to pick it up on Switch. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, mm. it should be a pretty good Switch game, I think, mm. for sure. It was nice. It was nicely, nicely done. Mm. But um, yeah, it just didn't didn't hold me. So from there, we moved on to the big ones now. So we got uh, Fallout seventy six, which we've talked about a lot previously. Um, that went down well. Mm. Uh, actually, just thinking about it, Bethesda's press conference had the best stage as well. I, I don't know if you yes. noticed that. Yes, because they sort of had this. It was almost like a basketball court with two mm. sides to it, wasn't it? So you had the crowd on both sides. And then a double-sided screen in the center of it, and it just made everybody that was on the stage look like a rock star. Yes, yes, it was really cool. I mean, and speaking of rock stars, I mean Todd Howard, what a yeah. what a dude! You know, he what a, yeah. he came out. I mean, Pete Hines is is it's Pete Hines, isn't it? He's the Bethesda guy. So mm. Pete, Pete Hines was he did a really good job at that conference. I thought he did superbly well. And then he handed over to Todd Howard for quite a, a quite a chunk of that conference. But Todd yeah. Howard came out with like a monologue about. Each Three being kind of like a teenager and growing up, and and that it's now in its twenties, you know, it did, did all of that, and then he just commanded the crowd, you know, throughout mm. the, all of the um, all of the announcements that he kind of did, he just had that crowd eating out of his hands, and I just sat there, and I just thought he's he's awesome, you know, he's just it, absolutely awesome. He just seems like such a nice guy, like you yeah. you just want to go to the pub and just chat with him because you yes. got a feeling he's got endless stories about things that he would, <laughs> yeah. he would be able to tell you. You know, I loved it, and a couple of times they swore, but they swore in really yeah. good places. They were like really good swears. Do you know what I mean? They did, I was yeah. just like, I was they like, I like this. Right moment. Yeah, I was yeah. like, it's not just swearing just to look edgy and hardcore. These were like really good swears in really good places. <laughs> no, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, he he came out and talked a lot about Fallout seventy six, which he'd been through, mm-hmm. and from there they went on to something which was a little bit surprising, I guess, in that they've created a new game for mobiles called Elder Scrolls Blades. Yes, um, which looks surprisingly good. Mm. Actually, I was shocked by how good it looked. It looks like almost like a full Elder Scrolls game, but they have kind of whipped out the overworld. But you just play you just play the kind of dungeon levels, and mm. they said half the dungeons are going to be curated. Uh, sorry, are, are going to be crafted, so they're going to be going to be made by people and the rest of them are going to be procedurally generated so it's one of those games that you could kind of go go back to and sort of um grind on on, on these levels and then i guess you'd go through the story levels which are going to be crafted with full stories and enemy placements and the rest of it um one of the most interesting things they did was play it in landscape mode on the phone and then switch to portrait mode seamlessly yes, yes. which i thought was great because you don't really see that in any games at all no. and he, he made the point that if you're sat in a meeting and you've got your phone in landscape mode everyone knows but then you turn it to portrait mode. At least you could be taking notes or something. I don't know. You're still using your phone in a meeting, so you're, you're probably still being a bit of a git. But, you know, you could at least get away with it. Just say you're, you're emailing or something. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, so that looks surprisingly good. Um, 
And I think that is out relatively soon, actually. Yeah, it was. Um, you we can pre-order it already. Option. Yeah, you can pre-order it on the iOS store. I've already pre-ordered. It's free to play. Uh, it's free to play. Ah, so and you have pre-ordered. Something. You have oh, pre-ordered I have, something. Yes, yeah. I've pre-ordered something. <laughs> Woohoo! Elder Scrolls Blades. Yeah. So the yeah. way because I was on, I was, um, I was somewhere, and I was just flicking through the kind of thing, and I checked it. I checked the iOS store, and there it was, and it was, uh, it was free. So I just tapped it, and then you could pre-order. So which was really cool because I thought, yeah, it's quite great. It's, it looked really cool, and there's also town building elements to it as well, isn't there? Yeah. And it's just like there's like almost a uh, there's a roguelike as well, where you can just go through a dungeon to see how far you can uh, survive. So which is quite cool. Yeah. But yeah. No, I have pre-ordered. There you go. <laughs> and it cost you a lot of money. It cost me so much, so much money. Um, okay, so from there we went on to probably the most exciting thing for me of the whole the whole of this E3 which was they announced uh, a game called Starfield which is their next generation RPG yes which is a sci-fi game that they've been building since 2013 so uh, wow. it looks relatively far along so I'm hoping it comes out in the next couple of years maybe mm. it's one of the next next gen console games or something um but just the thought of Bethesda doing a massive RPG in space which is kind of Mass Effect like or something similar to that uh, yeah I, I'm I'm fully signed up. Yeah. Uh, if I could pre-order that, I absolutely would. For sure, <laughs> they must have been happy. That the, uh, yeah, exactly. They but they must have been happy that the uh, Mass Effect uh, franchise went down a pooper because yeah, for sure. <laughs> they're like, yes, we've made way for Starfield. You know, they've been doing it yeah. since 2013. But yeah, they're, they're, all of those things, like you say, kind of uh, sci-fi and Bethesda. It's just such a lovely. It's such a lovely know, it's just, soup of it's goodness. Just intriguing. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. There's a really good interview with Todd Howard where he talks about this game, and uh, basically it sounds like if they didn't, if they didn't have, if they hadn't have picked up the Fallout license, this would have been the game that they launched with maybe four or five years ago. Right. But they, because they picked up the Fallout license, they've been they've just been sat on this and doing it as a back burner kind of thing until until now. But that's given them a massive amount of time to sort of develop it and develop it into what they want it to be. So in theory, this could be one of the best games that they make. I'm I'm, I'm hopeful for it anyway. Yes. Right, if it's had that long. Yeah. Um, and then they closed out with another announcement um, which was nothing more than a teaser but it was massive um, which is for The Elder Scrolls 6 which is coming after Starfield so that's got to be a good 4 or 5 years away uh, so that has to be a next 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 generation console game I think <laughs> but the crowd went absolutely crazy for it um, as you can expect and they, they did show a, a teaser trailer but again it's it was no more than sort of 20-30 seconds long just showing Tamriel uh, oh well, I think it was Tamriel I'm not entirely sure um, just to, just to sort of fly by a bit, but I kind of like what they've done. I really like what they did with this press conference because they showed you a whole gamut of stuff from yes. stuff that's coming out now, stuff that's coming out in a couple of months, stuff that's coming out next year, next year, and then they gave you the roadmap for where they're going in the next sort of five or six years, which was great because um, it fills in all those details, all those gaps about what they, what they've got coming up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this, to be honest, this was one of my favourite press conferences. I don't. I don't know about you guys. No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, before we we many score this, we actually <laughs> we didn't many score Xbox. So let's just kind of roll oh, back. Yeah. We didn't say so what was your score for Xbox, Manny. Uh, on my notes, I, I I put down like a nine out of ten because I didn't think they, I didn't think they could have done much more outside of um, announcing hardware, which they sort of did. Yeah. But uh, there were so many games in that conference. I thought, yeah, then then they they used the time really well. I yes, thought. I thought they really did. Steve, what about yeah. you? What's your Manny score? <laughs> I, I'd, I'd I'd have probably said eight and a half rather than nine, just because there was a lot of stuff that wasn't necessarily theirs. Uh, but like you said, there were so many games in there that I think they had a really good conference in terms of you know reassuring people that Xbox is the place to be and will be the place to be. So I thought that was a, was a really good showing, but not not quite a nine, but better than an eight. Yeah. For me, for me, I thought it was a it was a really good showing. I thought everyone who came out kind of presented really well. The the stage looked really cool. You know, those autumn leaves that came down in Forza Horizon were were amazing. It was very. It would have been a good one to kind of be at and kind of see it. And I I love that the fan fest guys were going nuts. So uh, for every uh, for every announcement, which is really good. But I'm going to give it an eight um, just because there was no Viva Pinata. <laughs> Fair. I thought that'd be a you one. You've got to save you ten for that, for sure. Exactly. Exactly. I would have given it a nine, but they deduct one point for no Viva Pinata. How dare they? How dare they? <laughs> you know. And we never even got any backwards compatibility stuff. So eight. Uh, and then so Bethesda. One thing. One thing before we manny score Bethesda is, uh, and I'm keeping a track of these. Um, is <laughs> the one thing I really liked was the um, was the Skyrim anywhere. 
trailer that they did where they had the comedy trailer where they had Skyrim on the fridge and on Amazon Alexa that was was just really funny because normally those things kind of fall a bit flat Um, but that one was really funny and it was just really really made me chuckle yeah, that, that's one of the few sort of comedy skits that I've seen at E3 that's actually worked. Was, yes. was Yeah, it was r- really well done. So what's your money score for Bethesda? I went, I went with a 9 as well on that oh, one. Nice, nice. In, re- in retrospect, I'm probably going to drop Xbox to an 8.5. Sorry. <laughs> right, so I've got 8.5 8. <laughs> 8. Uh, Xbox. So Steve, your money score for Bethesda? Um, I'd probably say 8, just just like the build of Microsoft one. But, um, you know, if, if I'd actually seen some gameplay footage of Elder Scrolls, then I think that would have bumped it up. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more, but like we said, that's definitely uh, a next box uh, a game. It must be, yeah, you know, for if you sure. have to Starfield. So I'm I'm hyped for it, yes. But until obviously, gotta get excited a bit plus time when we see some more, see some more actual footage of it. I think superb. I think for me, I am going to give them an eight as well because I just think it was such a well crafted, um, as you said, man. It's such a well crafted conference, and normally they only kind of show stuff that's coming out in the next year. But they did mm. actually kind of make a point and go, "We don't normally do this," but I guess they're fed up with people asking because no matter what they announce, they're always going to go, "Where's the next Skyrim?" Peter Molyneux obviously is going to, "Where's the next yeah. Skyrim? Where's the next Skyrim?" You know, it's like, <laughs> "Where's the next Skyrim? Where's this? Where's that? What? What's the new IP?" So I really like that. It's, it's it's one one of those things where like you have to assume that like everything's going to leak as well nowadays. So like yes. you're not going to be able to keep a secret for four no. or five years now. Uh, so you, you may as well just get on top of it to be honest. So yeah, this is what we're doing. Yeah, you'll find out about it in a couple of years. Absolutely. Until then, chill out. <laughs> yes, yes, it's coming. Shut up. All right. So mm-hmm. next up was another one that kind of dropped on. I think that kind of dropped later that day. It was about six o'clock, I think, on Monday, just before all of the other ones started. And this was just a video that went live on YouTube, and that was Square Enix. Um, did any of you guys watch it? Did you kind of because I, I, I did. I can't remember a thing about it. I, I can't remember a single a single thing. I watched. So I, I, I don't I watched, know what that says. Yeah, I watched half of it, and then I was like, no, I just can't watch any more of this. And I just, I think I was like, I was making dinner or something. But you know, the the <laughs> things that they announced in very quick was Monster Hunter is coming to Final Fantasy fourteen. So it was like Monster Hunter cross Final Fantasy. Um, Platinum Games is working on a... Platinum Games and Square Enix announced a new game called Babylon's Fall. Just Cause 4, obviously, which Steve was excited about as the 4th of Mm. December. And then Square Enix teased a new PC PS4 game called The Quiet Man. And I think, you know, kind of that was... That's kind of that conference, really, in a nutshell. Yeah, it doesn't inspire much confidence, does it, to be honest? Because they had a bunch of stuff they could have shown. Uh, Like, you know, obviously people were waiting for the Final Fantasy VII remake. There's any footage of that at all just to see... Um, but they, they didn't really do much with it at all. No Avengers. Yeah. They were supposed to be, in a, yeah. you know, there's, they, they, they teased a couple of years ago that they were making an Avengers game. And, you know, with with um, Infinity War Part 2 or whatever the next Avengers movie is going to be called out next yeah. year, you would thought that would be uh, the perfect time. You know, between now and that movie, it's the perfect time to release an Avengers game. You know, we're kind yeah. of at maximum hype for Avengers and uh, it's it's now is the time. Yeah, it was a, it was a weird press conference to be honest. Really I'm was. not sure what they were trying to do with it. No, no, it was it was really bizarre. I just found it absolutely just bonkers. So how mm. much how much did you sit through, Steve? I, I didn't watch Square Enix at all. I didn't, I didn't watch <laughs> Zero. It and, and by the sounds of it, um I I didn't miss anything. No. Um you know, I mean like you say there was I think we chatted about it the last time. Um we followed together, Anthony, is that we, we assumed that there would be some Final Fantasy Seven news come E3, but to not even show anything or, you know, mention it or, you know... Because there was the rumour again that it's got, when was it going to be finished by? You know, was it something ridiculous, 2025 or something yeah. mad like that, we said? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a long time for it to come, but give us something, <laughs> you know, and and the the game that they, they could have launched, obviously, beyond the, the sort of the, the new games they announced, you know, having this fall and the quiet man, the only other things that they've got really had already been mm. shown elsewhere, and I think we we said this before we we started podding. The trailer for Kingdom Hearts was better on the Xbox or Sony conference than their own trailer for it. You know, so it's kind of like, would you not save your best trailer for your own conference? You know, would you not want to, <laughs> you know, deliver the good stuff yourself? But yeah, I didn't miss much by the sounds of it. No, definitely no, not. no. Although it wasn't, it wasn't the worst conference. No. <laughs> no, no, definitely going to get to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, so, so Manny score for that? 
Oh, I can't. I didn't even. I didn't even put a score against it because I, I literally couldn't remember a thing. Just off off my gut, I'll go with like a four. I guess. Wow. Because it was, it was well, it was terrible, wasn't it? Yeah. Steve, you got to give it yeah. a zero, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah. By default, I have to give it a zero because I didn't watch it. So yeah, <laughs> that, that that's that's the default score. <laughs> I'm gonna lowball it with a two, just because I started Ooh. watching it and I was just like, there was nothing. I mean, I'm sure if you kind of like, if you love Monster Hunter and Final Fantasy 14, then this was kind of like ticking all your boxes. But this just wasn't. This wasn't for me. This just conference wasn't for me. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was just shocking. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> next so next up and the kind of E3 conference breakdown next up on the I think it was about 9 o'clock on Monday uh, was Ubisoft um, the kind of the, the bonkers uncle of the gaming world and, and I, I have to say I really enjoyed it it started off with uh, Dancing Panda and it started off with uh, Just Dance um, so they kind of it was really funny because just as it was starting it was getting ready to kind of jump in it was a little bit it was a little bit awkward the pre-show stuff was a little bit awkward and I said to my wife I said like to Nicola I said you know this is going to be bonkers and then it cuts to that big dancing panda who were kind of came in and they did that dance number but I don't know about you guys I, I really enjoyed that dance number I really enjoyed that kind of college band kind of yeah, it was kick out. I really got into it. By the end, I was like, yeah. oh, I'm going to go on iTunes and download an album of this stuff. You know, I was like really kind of getting into <laughs> buy a, it. Buy a panda costume. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah. hey, Siri, play me some, some college <laughs> bands. You know, panda costume. Like... I, can, I can see you wearing a panda costume, oh, actually. God, that would just be I don't so know cool. why, but I can just picture it. <laughs> yeah. can, can you do that and do the same number on your, uh, your Ringo doorbell for us? Oh, absolutely. That would oh, yeah, yeah. be my costume on Friday. <laughs> do you know what? I was ready. If Microsoft, if the Microsoft conference um, announced Viva Pinata, I was all ready to to just go and dance at the ring, uh, my ring doorbell. I just, like, <laughs> I was ready to do it. I was like, I'm going, but they never did, so that never happened. <laughs> well done, Phil. Well done, Phil. Anyway, right back to Ubisoft. So they opened with um, Just Dance 2019, which is going to be on the Wii. They're still putting it out on the Wii. It's on the Wii. It's on the Wii U. It's on. It's everything the professor was talking. She was uh, making fun of. It's on the fridge. It's it's everywhere. It's still we're still releasing Just Dance on the Wii, which just makes me laugh. Um, so we had Just Dance was really cool. They cleared the stage and then out came um, the the team behind Beyond Good and Evil Two, um, and they just said they wanted to give us an update of where we are, and then they showed us just possibly it was one of my favorite things of e3 2017 and it was one of my favorite things of 2018 which was the the trailer the kind of teaser the cinematic trailer for beyond good and evil and it just looked absolutely stunning i cannot wait to play this game uh, what did you guys think did you did you did you enjoy that cinematic splendor yeah they've, they've given us a an update on where it is but still they haven't really have they because like you say it, it looks brilliant and i and Beyond Good and Evil, the first one was a really, a really cool game and a really different game when it first came out. But it, it is it still going to come? Is it going to happen? When's it going to happen? You know, like to say they give us an update on it, but they didn't at the same time because we still don't know when it's happening. If it's happening, are we actually going to see any game footage of it? Because that was still very much a trailer, wasn't it? You know, it's very much mm. still cinematic. You know, nothing from it. So, is that a, a next gen thing, a PS5, or a, you know, a next Xbox game? You know, wh- when's it coming? When's it happening? Because as much as the the last two trailers we've seen do look really cool and they look really good, is this just going to be something that we keep seeing a trailer for a trailer for a trailer, for, and then it gets knocked on the head, or you know, or is it going to be a trailer for a trailer for a trailer for, and then actually, oh, come say like next year's E3 is coming out end of 2019. But from what I've seen as well, they are trying to get people in bo- on board with like the fans to get their artwork and ideas involved with the game, aren't they? So, yes. did, they, did they bring a guy on to say that say the, you know, send you your ideas and your concepts into these people, and then we'll try and bring it into the game? So it's kind of like, well, does that not mean sure that they're still quite in deep in development and design of it because of the run out of ideas? You know, are, are they not sure of the ideas that they've already come up with? You know. What's the you know? It's great that the community can have a you know a say on it, but by the same token, where does that leave the game right now? What yes. point is it at? You know, where is it at? Is it yeah. still a case of we're still trying to build it? We'll keep bringing trailers and trailers to keep the excitement, but we're still trying to get it off the drawing board. So yeah, 
that's that sort of crowdsourced content stuff was it, it seems pretty cool actually mm-hmm. uh, the, the if you notice the um the screenshot that they had for it just pointed to like a little billboard in the uh, the world so if it's that kind of thing if it's just that sort of small scale art stuff then that's fine I, you know they could be anywhere at, yeah. at this point doesn't yeah. mean that they're you know right at the start of uh, the dev process or no. or right 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 near the end but it's pretty damn cool uh, it was joseph Go- joseph gordon levitt wasn't it yes came out. yeah that guy was uh, joseph gordon levitt and he was the the robin yeah. of the batman universe the robin that could have been <laughs> yeah indeed um, and then uh, he i think he had to go on twitter pretty quickly afterwards to clarify that people are going to get paid for the stuff that goes in, 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 in into that game as well so if you if you make a poster or something then you will definitely get royalties for it wow. which is which is cool that's really cool because like you say all they need yeah. to do is put placeholders in the code because what they're doing is it looks like they're creating kind of really kind of vast bustly um environments and then suddenly they might have thought oh it looks a bit stark or we're repeating the same textures so we want to do that so partnering up with hip record um uh, i think it was a really good idea it was was absolutely superb and the one thing that did make me laugh um about um this this particular reveal and also a lot of other reveals in ubisoft is that they they kept the microphones on so at the end of this one when they when the the, the lady left the stage so when the devs left the stage she was like yes we did it we did it high fives and the, her microphone was still on <laughs> so the whole world the whole heard this you know and i think and, oh, joseph, and joseph gordon love it did kind of take to twitter saying they got cut off at the end and yes you know as you said money yeah you will get paid for this but i thought i thought this was fantastic and of course the big reveal um for from this trailer was that jade is going to be the antagonist of, of this mm. of this game so which was a real kind of it means that beyond good and evil 2 is a prequel to beyond good and evil um because everyone's looking a little bit younger look so it's just ah oh, i just can't wait for this game and i think i think this game for me is kind of what you've been saying Mandy. there's a couple of games that you've seen and they're like this isn't this generation this is yeah. this is ubisoft's a well, launch you, title for the next Xbox PS5. You kind of can't really tell though, can you? Because we've not seen any gameplay at all. As, as oh, Steve no, was we, saying, we've not seen a single thing. We have. That, I mean, that's, that we've CGI seen, looked amazing. We've seen some pre-alpha gameplay. There was a whole there was a whole hour conference where Ubisoft did a Twitch stream and they showed the monkey whose name kind of escapes me. Uh, is it Pedge? It, but oh, I think that's the pig. Pedge is it? the pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw you yeah. saw the monkey guy kind of like jet streaming from from pirate ship to pirate pirate ship and you started oh saw interesting I've, I've not seen that yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, have, I'll have to check it out so is it is it just a standard third person action kind of game then mm. or what what sort of setup that's is? Yeah, so the same as the first one yeah, yeah absolutely and, and they did say that they're showing they're doing a live demo um behind closed doors at e3 this year as well oh cool it might actually release then you never know mm. i hope so I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm, you know, ever the ever the optimist, but I'm hopeful because this is just this is a game that's been kind of kicking around for years, and this just looks looks stunning. I just cannot wait um, to to kind of check that out. So up next, after beyond, like I say, the funniest thing was after when they did left, you, when they did leave the stage, you just heard the jubilance of that of the dev as uh, they were like kind of very happy that they nailed it. Um, and then after that, we had a um, trials game was announced. So the guy came on and kind of evil. <laughs> evil fell over the stage broke something and then announced the trials game um which i which is kind of it kind of worked but it was bonkers so it's it's almost like uh, uh, when this happens it's just bonkers ubisoft hour so you just kind of take everything yeah. and just laugh along with them um yeah for sure but but yeah so new trials game so we're getting a new trials game and this was uh i think this is coming next year as well isn't it i think so yeah it looks it looks pretty cool actually because i i do like trials games um but fusion was kind of not the best one i don't think it, it was good but it was just a bit it was just a bit too cold and a bit too clean so this one looks like it's getting back to the just just sort of pure dirty mm. chaos basically of previous games which which would be great i think and they also said that they've been partnering with the trials university i believe it was which mm. is the kind of youtube stream that helps you get through the different levels etc um so yeah they, they did say that trials rising which is the name of the game will be releasing in february 2019 we've got another one steve um and uh and there will be a beta very soon so up on the screen when they announced the date it said that there's a beta you know you can go over to trials I was rising and uh, and sign up for a beta. Amazing! <clears throat> I will do that straight after this. I didn't know that. Yep. And then after that, we had uh, the Division Two. So they came out and gave us a bit of Division Two, kind of pretty much what we've been talking about. You know that they're going to have post-campaign character progression, eight-person raids, and three DLC episodes as well. So they're going to they're bringing raids um, to the Division. Yeah, which 
be fantastic. Did sorry, did they say the player count on on the raids? Yeah, eight, eight in total. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Which is yeah. that would be pretty cool. That would be that would be good fun to uh, to kind of go through, and then so it, yeah. it just makes that game even more and more kind of pleasing. And like I say, the fact that they're kind of DLC three DLC because what they said, I think they kind of they realised that the last one kind of split the pay player, player base because not everyone wants to stump up for the season pass and the continual levels. So. You know, yeah. they've, they've. I think a lot of publishers are realizing now that they need to kind of bring out free DLC to just kind of keep everyone at the same level. Yep, makes sense. Keep everybody playing the same game. Mm. And then up next was Mario plus Rabbids. Um, so they had a whole section with the uh, great uh, Grant Kirkhope uh, came out and did an orchestral um, kind of... I thought they were going to break into like a DK rap or something, uh, but it was a really good piece, uh, which was kind of announcing the Donkey Kong expansion, uh, which arrived uh, later in June uh, for Mario plus Rabbids, which I, I thought was quite exciting. Did either of you play that? Did you play that, Steve? Did you play... Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I, did. I think I did the first world... Um, then I left it at that because it, well, you know, it, it was good. It's a good game. It's a, it's a really good game. But I think that for me was just enough for me. Um, in terms of did the first sort of world, the first section, left it at that, and the rabbits were kind of I think Ubisoft's answer to Minions, weren't they? I think in a way, yeah. um, which I don't think quite took off. But the the actual the actual game Mario and Rabbids, I thought was you know it's quite a good outing for both Rabbids and for Mario as well because it was good for Nintendo to let that license go to, to somebody else to, to have their own little input in and bizarrely Mario in a sort of a an XCOM sort of top mm. down strategy game works. Um, you know, it, it, you know, as mad as the story is in there, it, it, it does work and it was a good game. But um I have I haven't played it since then. Um but I it's good that they are supporting it with more content because, you know, to it's good that they're keeping that alive and Nintendo are happy for them to keep that alive as well. Absolutely, and I just, I, I really, you know, it's it's a game that sits on my Switch and I play it every now and then, you know, it's kind of ramping up its difficulty now, but I just really enjoy it, you know, every now and then just jumping into that, like, strategy-based game, and as you say, it's really, it's, when we saw that last year, seeing Mario with a gun and things like that, it was just absolutely bonkers. So, you know, continuing that with Donkey Kong, it looks very cool, it looks very cool, and like I say, the, the musical interlude that we had with Grant Kirkhope was just, it was fantastic. You know, there were some really, there were some really cool musicians that were just like really kind of rocky, and I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, so that was kind of uh, the Donkey Kong expansion, like I could say, that comes later this month. And then, kind of continuing in the Nintendo theme, they showed off Starlink Battle for uh, Atlas. Which is the toy to life um, space adventure game? Um, so, which which looked really cool. Um, but then they then they introduced Miyamoto, um, who was in the he was in the audience yet again. Um, Everybody's favorite uncle. Exactly. <laughs> he's just he's just so nice. You just want to give him a big hug, don't you? You just really want to mm. kind of. And then they announced that Star Fox um, will be coming to the Switch version only of Starlink. So I just thought this was fantastic. Did you get excited about this last year? I seem I vaguely seem to remember you thinking that it looked good. Anthony, am I making that up? No, I that was Matt. That someone, someone it got Matt. really excited. It was about Matt. It. It was Matt. It was, that was, it was I remember. Matt. Yeah, I remember one of us did. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because we all thought Toys for Life was gone, but then no, the resurrection. Yes, absolutely. No, Matt, Matt got quite excited. It, it's quite interesting because you can pre-order it now, um, and you can get the Star Fox Star Wing, I believe it's called. Um, it's kind of available on the Switch version, so you can build that as kind of part of the Toys to Life. That'll look cool on your shelf, if nothing. Is this this is the one where you sort of you can build like modular spacecraft? Is that right? So you can swap out mm. bits of it. Yes, I'm making that up. So you, you don't just buy a toy; you buy parts of it, and then they sort of clip together. I think so. Yes, yeah. I think you're absolutely spot on. Yeah. yeah. No, it looks really yeah. cool. That might be a cool little spin hmm. on it, that, actually. Might be nice. Yeah. And then next up, they had the hardcore for Honor Guy came out, who was uh, big and scary, <laughs> and he kind of <laughs> came out, um, spouted some numbers about For Honor, and, and basically just saying that they're continuing to support it. They showed us a new trailer uh, for kind of more factions that are coming to For Honor, um, and then also that it's available for free all week on PC as well. Which is great. Have, have you guys delved into it at all or tried it? Yeah. No, I played it when it first came out. I think we got sent a review code and I played it when it first came out uh, for um, on the Xbox and it looked absolutely fantastic. But you've been jumping into it recently, haven't you, Manny? Yeah, I've been playing it with a couple of guys from work and it's um it's surprisingly good, actually, because <laughs> normally like 
I find that online games that aren't shooters, you know, if you're playing something with with sword combat or something, you, it, it just doesn't. Nothing ever feels quite right because mm. of the lag and you know stuff. Stuff is just slightly off. But this plays really, really, really well. Um, it's almost, it's kind of almost, it's almost like a Street Fighter game almost because you, you get these different characters and they all they've all got the different move sets and so on and so forth. So if you want to be a big heavy clubber dude, you can you can do that. Or if you want to be a little nimble character, you can you can play as one. Um, so it caters to a lot of different play styles and, and, and such, and people that might be good at combat can you know wade in, and people that are not so good at combat can just go around and capture points and so on and so forth. So it, it's really good, like very very deep, very very good. So if it's free, then yeah, you should definitely definitely try it. Wow, that's just so cool. So yeah, so they they bring in kind of a new faction, which is Warriors of the Wu Ling, um, and that's coming as part of a Marching Fire DLC that's coming soon. And that's cool. That's coming. I think they said it's due to arrive in October, some point. So that looks looks it looks really good. It's like as you said before, you know, it's really good to see that these guys are continuing to support their games. You know, even a game that's come out a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. I think between that and Rainbow Six Siege, mm. UB have done really well. Yes, really, really well with the teams. Yeah, absolutely. And then up next was the Crew Two. Um, so they said that the Crew Two gets an open beta uh, all next week. So next week, from, so it's it's coming out at the end of June, uh, but all next week from the 21st of June, you'll be able to play um, the open beta of Crew 2 on PlayStation, uh, Xbox and PC, and you can, pre, you can pre-load it now. That was their kind of thing. It was like, it's available now, but it doesn't unlock until the 21st of June. Great. I'm extremely tempted by, by, by that again. Mm. Um, the first one was better than you might think it... But, sorry, but it's better than you might have thought that it, it would have been. When you know, when you see the size of that map and so on mm. and so forth, you, you might think it's you know they'd be stretched thin, but it's actually a really good little racing game. It's good fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it was kind of like I was talking to you and Matt where I was talking about that I wanted a kind of American racing game, and you're like, it already exists. It's the crew, and I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. What is this game? How did I miss it? So it was quite interesting. So I'm quite I'm quite looking forward to jumping in. I'm going to jump into the beta um, and just go kind of the open beta and just kind of see kind of what it's like and what it's about. Yeah, if you drive, I suspect if you in, in the first crew anyway, if you drive coast to coast in that game, it would probably take you like an hour and a half or something. It's a, it's a vast, vast map. There's wow. tons and tons of stuff on there. So that's so cool. And then next up, uh, I've just lost where I was. And next up, they had the uh, the pirate game, so Ubisoft's pirate game, which was uh, <laughs> uh, not Sea of Thieves. Um, it, was, it was a Skull and Bones. Um, so they had They've been thieving the seas. Exactly. They they had kind of a Sea of Thieves like game, um, Skull and bones and i just thought you know it looked good it seemed to be more single player it seemed like you were kind yeah. of controlling the ship and you could easily you could switch to someone in the crow's nest switch back to the it looks like it mm. was the piratey bit of assassin's creed really it just looked like kind of that yeah uh, I, I think it is it's the mode from assassin's creed black flag if mm. i remember rightly which was one of the best ones they've done yes um but just sort of strung out into a, a a proper game mm. the one thing i mean that played really well in black flag so i suspect this will play well also but the thing i noticed when i was watching the footage now is after playing sea of thieves it just it looks a little bit a little bit lightweight yes. like the ships don't seem to have any heft to them no. like you know in sea of thieves as you know as you know well <laughs> it, it, there are there are sods to actually turn them to stop them to get them up to speed whereas in this it just seemed a bit more nippy and a mm. bit more like a little almost like a racing game kind of thing yes yeah, absolutely. It looked like you could just turn very easily. You know, yeah. it was just like yeah. you could just maneuver the ship round. And they did show that you could be online as well, and you could bring in other friends. I think there was a big battle that was happening, and suddenly three other ships appeared. Your friends kind of appeared over the over the horizon to help you out. Mm. But so yeah, but so Steve, you're into the pirate genre right now. What did you think of uh, Skull and Bones? Um, right, so. It- it kind of did they know that Sea of Thieves was in development? Did Sea of Thieves, you know, did Rare know this was in development? You know, it's kind of who pinched whose pocket kind of thing, but it's, it kind of offers a different spin on it because if you read about it, like obviously in Sea of Thieves, you share a boat with the people you play with, whereas with this, you man your own ship and then other people have their own ships and you kind of go along and have your own ship because it's actually commandeered by AI, like you say, you can flip between doing things yourself, but the most of the control and ship is controlled by AI, which for, for you, Anthony, is probably you know, not necessarily <laughs> a, a bad thing, but um, <laughs> it looks better than it did the first time we saw it, because if I remember rightly, the first time we saw it, it looked questionable, shall we yes. say. Um, so, I mean, it does look very reminiscent of, of Sea of Thieves in some ways, like I say, that depends on you know what came first, chicken or the egg in terms of did they know, didn't they know, sort of thing, but 
I, whether I'll play it or not, I don't know, because by the time this actually comes out, Sea of Thieves will be well on its way into its extra content. It'll been out quite a few months, that sort of thing, so will it have the same staying power? It'll be able to compete with it, that sort of thing. Like you say, the, the whole thing looks a bit floaty in terms of the actual mechanics. It doesn't look as real, shall we say, in, mm. in quotation marks, as, as Sea of Thieves does in terms of its controls. So how it'll fare compared to that will be interesting, but you know, just just reading about the the sort of the description makes me chuckle in terms of trying to invite people or get people to to play with your party or your crew. You have to climb the crow's nest and see them through the the telescope. And it's like there's always some tower climbing in a Ubisoft game, isn't there? Somewhere <laughs> there is always a tower climbing. You have to look at something to spot something. Um, but yeah, you jump I mean, off the crow's nest into yeah, some bale of hay of the yeah, ship and. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, how similar it will be to, to see if these, I don't know, but I'd, I'd, I'd give it a go. You know, I'd, you know, even if it's just a, a boomerang run, to, to give it a go and see what it's like. But I just worry for its sake more than anything, rather than worrying for see if these that by the time it launches, you know, sometime it says here sometime after April 2019. I say, see if these will be well on its way to to uh, well, obviously all its content for this year will be out by then. So. I just worry for its sake as how it will, it will hold up in comparison. Yeah, it's really interesting to see like two games that are have the same kind of subject matter, um, but are very different. You know, you can kind of see the differences, mm. but the similarities. You know, where this one just seems to be, like you say, very kind of single player, very kind of like almost a racing game. But you know, kind of where Sea of Thieves, you could say, oh, and not see anyone for ages. Where this looks like that kind of ship combat is going to just be kind of full on um mm. and it kind of always reminds me of those you know when you always have those two movies that come out at the same time like you had ants and bugs life or dante's <laughs> peak and volcano where it's just like maybe they didn't know about it until they announced and then they were like bugger you know it's just like they got, <laughs> and then, and, you know, did they delay this because they started playing sea of thieves going oh this is what our game you can imagine those guys at ubisoft they all fire up sea of thieves on a friday like you know oh this is what our game should have been like yeah. you know this is what we shouldn't be this doing. is better than our game. This is better than our game. <laughs> yeah, no one, no one show the director the Sea of Thieves. And it's just like, but yeah, so that's getting delayed till next year. But you know, it, it looked great. The seas wasn't as good. Uh, I didn't think the sea mechanic was as good as Sea of Thieves. It looked a little bit kind of a uh, little bit video gamey. But apart from that, you know, it, it did look stunning. It looked uh, the, the ships looked incredible. Yeah, so it, it seems there's more customization for it as well. I mean, from just from reading the the yes, bulletin that yes, that's something that does have over Sea of Thieves. That you can customize the ship in more detail. In terms of aspects of the cannon, the wheel, the equipment, you know, and these yeah. have actually have statistical effects on the ship, whereas Sea of Thieves is very cosmetic, which I think is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but like you say, this one's a bit more of a sort of a, a racing element that, you know, like a racing game, like you say, to what cannon it makes this ship heavier, the slower to reload, that sort of thing, you know, so it'll be interesting to see what, how expansive and extensive those sort of details are and as to what mm-hmm. effect they have in terms of how it affects you playing it as well yeah I want, I want I want a pirate ship with LED lights underneath and a massive exhaust <laughs> on the back oh. and some kind of skirting around the yeah, side yeah the spoiler yes. on the back yeah <laughs> nice nice classy I think you know that's yeah, just, I think, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty I nice. think you look at McDonald's car park <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well that's going to be DLC for uh, Forza Horizon 4 isn't it <laughs> uh, <laughs> or a, McDonald's a car retail park. park somewhere yeah <laughs> So, yeah. so uh, and then finally with uh, Ubisoft, they showed off uh, kind of you know thanks to uh, their friends at Walmart. Um, they had already been leaked, which was Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey. So Assassin's Creed Odyssey, they gave it a kind of full trailer and uh, a full kind of launch, which is it's coming out October this year, um, and it's set in ancient Greece. Um, and I think the kind of big thing for this is not only do you have um, it kind of looks very much like Assassin's Creed Origins, but now you have um, conversation trees as well so similar to kind of mass effect you have those kind of conversation where every every conversation then branches off and you can choose kind of what your answer so which i thought was quite nice quite nice little rpg element and also it allows you for the first time to choose your protagonist so you can be alexios or you could be cassandra um so i thought which was a really good kind of take and then obviously it just flows through the rest of the game so uh, it looked it looked quite good did you guys uh did you guys kind of enjoy the uh, brief glimpse that they gave of uh, of this yeah i, I think I've briefly played Origins. I need to actually get back into it and play it more. But I really love that game from from what I played of it. And this seemed very similar in terms of the engine capabilities. But it's just so much more colourful, you know, because that that Greek setting is just full of greenery and, and blue and 
yeah, I, th- I think it looks like it could be it could be fantastic. I like that they're pushing more into this RPG style as well. So it's just giving it that bit more depth to it because you know it as much as i love the previous games they, they can get a bit shallow mm. um so it, the more features like this that they add yeah brilliant all all for it to be honest and i did love at the end of it they just as they kind of gave you a, a little sneak a sneak peek of a minotaur so there was like mm. so they're going to have mythical creatures in here as well which i thought yeah. was just i thought was quite nice somehow they'll kind of mix those into the into the play and i just thought that was fantastic you know that kind of that kind of got me interested i'm i'm surprised to see that this is coming out this year because a lot of people thought that they were going to be flip-flopping between uh watchdogs and assassin's creed um but they are they're just kind of they're ready to kind of bring this out so which i thought was quite interesting surprising mm. yeah very very surprising mm. considering how big those those games are they, they must have multiple teams working on these things now yeah must be, must be. So this is this is set. So Asian Greece. So this is set before Assassin's Creed Origins. I don't know actually. I'm, I'm not really up from on my history on that on, on that on that side of things. I, I should know. It I guess it. Be anywhere I guess Assassin's it would be Creed, after. Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can you can uh, tell us that answer at feedback at gameslostspark.com. <laughs> 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 so Historians we're all just like, out there. Just, uh, I, I tell you what. The the, the thing that, that made me chuckle was they they definitely overused the 300 kick the 300 sparta kick there was like i think they must have seen that about four or five times in that trailer you know where they do the mm. kind of kick from 300 uh, with gerard they yeah, did, yeah. kind of that sweeping I, I enjoyed it i thought it's quite cool I, I think if that's a button press that'd be really cool yeah they've just made that part of the actual combat window uh, part of the combat moves here, they, yes yes so did you just wikipedia when asian green is, uh, yeah is asian green's <laughs> green's <laughs> before <laughs> Rose. reflection in the background of <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm coming up with non, non-specific answers it looks like there's a lot of crossover actually so it may be roughly around the same period i can see his eyes I can that's, see that's what eyes. I would guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, bear with me a second. Let me just have a quick cut up. Now, it does say here in the Eurogamer interview uh, um, article, it says that it's set on land and sea 400 years before Assassin's Creed Origins during the uh, Peloponnesian War. I just murdered whatever that was. But yeah, 400 years before there Assassin's we go. Creed Perfect. Origins. Thank you, history teacher. There you go. Elbow you patch that game Origins, though, if you're going to have a game before it. Yeah. <laughs> But they, you know, they had a yeah, yeah. yeah I'll Ubisoft. shut up there. Answer that. Yeah, yeah Ubisoft in your face. Um, so that was Ubisoft. It was great conference. I thought it was really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, it was bonkers. So, oh, before we move on to the next one, Manny score. Uh, I think I went with I went with the seven, seven. on that one. Yeah, good score, good score. Seven out of ten. I like that. I'm gonna go for that. T, Steve. Uh, I'll go for a, a six and a half. I mean, six, 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 six and a half. Oh. Standard half point below. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on to you. Carter, hello. Right, so so next up, um, the early hours of uh, Tuesday morning was uh, Sony's conference. Manny, do you want to kick us through that one? Yeah, I, I didn't watch this one live because it was on at ridiculous time. It was like two thirty in the morning, wasn't it? I think two a.m. I got up and watched it. Oh, crazy! I got up and watched it. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I went down to. The... Was it worthwhile? Fall asleep during this I've one. I've seen as it well. since, but yeah. No, no. Was I... it worthwhile for you to stay up? <laughs> it, it was really funny because you know, and you'll get through it at the moment. But they kind of had a, a big reveal at the start, and then I think I was saying to Steve just before we hit record, <clears> they kind of had this big reveal, which we'll get to in a moment, and then they just. They they switched around venues, kind of where yeah. they were. Ha- so it was almost like they just pulled the handbrake, and they cut. It was weird. It was really it? weird. They had uh, Sid Schumann and Ryan Clements, who are who are the kind of Major Nelson and, and Jeff Rubenstein of Sony World. Um, but it was just really weird. It was really weird. Yeah. So they they sort of started off in this um, what almost looked like a like a sort of wedding marquee or something, but a, but a massive massive one. Didn't yes. It? So it was like half wedding marquee, half sort of church hall kind of thing. Yeah. With these low low hanging lights and it looked fantastic. And then this guy started, this guy came out of the stage and started playing the banjo. So it didn't take you long to figure out if this was going to lead into a Last of Us trailer, which it duly did. Mm. Um, and that trailer, I think, has been a bit divisive mm. from what I've read online. Um, I thought it was it was great. Um, however. When they went into the extended sort of combat sequences, I I did think they they sort of milked the violence a little bit too much for me. It was almost like they were just shoving it in your face like a teenager, like <laughs> look at me, you know. It was just, it was just a bit too much. It's like they were going out of their way to 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 shock you, and that game doesn't really need that. No, it needs it in the, needs it during the gameplay at certain points, mm. but it doesn't need three or four things in the trailer to to shock you. Mm. So at one point you see um you see somebody's. Uh, 
somebody's getting cut in the stomach and their intestines are falling out and there's a lot of neck stabbing in it yes. as well, which I know was in the first one, but the graphics technology has moved on so much. <laughs> it was actually making me a bit squeamish, yes. to be completely honest. Um, I don't know what you guys thought of the level of violence in it or whether that put you off. Or... It didn't put me off, but it did worry me because I did, I did enjoy the, when they were showing the kind of gameplay and they were showing um, Ellie just kind of down in the in the in the in the uh, leaves and just kind of stealthing it. I thought, oh, I like this. This is really cool. You know, she's going to mm. take them out. And, and then just to kind of see that, when she kind of jump, did the jump on those guys and did just that, I was like, oh. You yeah. know, I, I, I don't know if I can... Obviously, I'm going to play it because I really enjoyed Last of Us. But just like having kind of, you know, 12 hours of that is going to be a bit of a a bit of a tough it's slog. Much, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was one of those... Because I don't, I don't get shocked by stuff like that ever. You know, I played played thousands of games and I'd very very rarely get shocked but this, there's something about it that mm. I don't know it just just rubbed me the wrong way a little bit Yeah, it's just that they didn't need to show that much anyway yes. but outside of that the trailer I thought looked really really good Yes, um, the storytelling side of things looked, looked great uh, there's a number of reveals in there to do with Ellie's character which I won't spoil um, because it's worth watching it mm. um, but the actual moment to moment animation looked way better I thought than the first one it looked less robotic the enemies when they when they're searching around for you, they look like their behaviour was better as well. So they were they were sort of searching naturally, whereas before they'd go on these set paths, which didn't didn't quite look right. Um, and everything about it, I thought, just looked smoother. Combat looked better. Uh, the graphics obviously look ridiculously good, mm. um, just ridiculously good. Especially things like the combat animations where someone's getting shot. And you can see their limb move from it. Yes, like I know GTA games have done this in the past, but this looked even better than that. I think because some of the GTA stuff was more kind of comedy, um, but this just looked overly real um, to the point where like arrows sort of stick in and stay in your body. You know when you have to yank them out. Um, so yeah, I thought pretty much everything about it looked like an improvement on the first one. I just wish they didn't go for that sort of shocking angle for it because you you don't need that in the trailer. Leave it in the game for sure, but in the trailer you just you just don't need it. Was it was it this trailer where um, Ellie was shot in the shoulder with a with an arrow and you could see it yeah. kind of in your health bar down in the bottom right hand corner and then she actually kind of pulled it out as well when she kind of had That's a moment right, yeah. and then you see the health bar kind of almost filling up again and I just thought that was yeah. just like I thought that was really cool, but. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so yeah, so that, so that was that was great. So they, they they had this massive long trailer in this uh, wedding marquee slash church thing, and then as you said, the entire conference was just put on hold for a minute. Yeah. Uh, while they cut to a couple of people who were interviewing, um, I think it was Sean Layden, wasn't it from yeah from the PlayStation, which was bizarre because you don't really get that with Sony conferences normally. It just looked a bit. It looks a bit. It looks so weird to go from this smooth presentation to just having this random little interview off to the side. And then you cut back, and it's an entirely different arena. So they've mo- they've shuffled everybody out of one place into another place, which mm. then looks like a PlayStation conference because you get the massive screen, and you know it looks like your standard PlayStation conference at that point. But I was I wasn't a fan of that transition at all. No, no, it was just just bizarre. It was it was just like I say, Sid Schumann and Ryan Clements. They're great on the podcast on the uh, PlayStation podcast, but for some reason they were just a little bit. It was all just a little bit clunky. They just kind of looked yeah. a little bit nervous, a little bit kind of uncomfortable, and you know they could have done so much more than just do that and kind of take you out but yeah I mean yeah. they announced a couple of new games there they announced a new game plus for God of War which I think a lot mm. of people but you know they could have that could have been their moment for here's another announcement it could have Microsoft it at that point you know here's another announcement yeah, here's another absolutely. announcement but it was just a weird but then like I say it kind of went back over to another auditorium and it just kind of it then was back into being a Sony conference wasn't it standard Sony conference yeah I think one of the first things they did was announced that um, Black Ops 3 mm. was available as a PlayStation Plus giveaway as well which is a nice nice surprise yeah um, I went to download that today for myself but it's uh, believe it or not it's 56 gig <laughs> what <laughs> which is which is rather a lot for a game that came out in 2015 yeah um, so I, I've got to make some space for that um, but I've heard I've not played it but that's meant to be one of the better Call of Duty games in terms of single player and multiplayer so I'm, I'm half tempted to play it mm. I don't know about did you, did you guys play it when it came out or yeah I, yeah. I did did you play it Steve Far? yeah yeah I did it's, it's, it's good it's good you know but I'm more of a sort of a traditionalist when it comes to Call of Duty that you know this sort of futuristic sci-fi sort of thing I think they're going a bit too far with it in terms of you know lasers you know all that sort of stuff. It is. It, it's just. It is fiction. I know every Call of Duty is fiction, but I prefer a Call of Duty to be set sort of in a bit of a bit more sort of grounded, a bit more grounded, a bit more realistic. You know, I think it's 
a shooter, not I think shooter and sci-fi should be separate. You know, it'd be like Battlefield suddenly tried its hand at sci-fi. You know, it's obviously they've had different spin-offs in terms of like bad company things like that. But I think Call of Duty is better when it's a bit more grounded in, in realism. But yeah, it, it's a good campaign. You know, like I said, I, I did play it and I, I quite enjoyed it. But to me, it's, I'm a bit more traditional when it comes to Call of Duty staying true to truer to the word, a bit more realism than than sci-fi. That is fair enough. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm half tempted to try it because, like I said, I've just heard so much positive stuff mm. about it. But for yeah, free, no, it, um, it, yeah, it, it's worth a free it's definitely download. One of the yeah, more far out. exactly. Yeah, if you can if you sure. can make make space to make way for 56 yeah. gig, then it's kind of worth. I can't believe it's that it's like four year old game, man. That's crazy. And it's all the multiplayer yeah. and all the zombies, yeah. I guess, as well. So you got all yeah, that. I suppose yeah, that's right. That's a massive thing. Now. Oh, we should anyway, play some so, zombies. Oh, we should do some. Yeah. Oh, that would be so. Cool. Actually, I've never done that. I've never done that properly. I did it in was it World at War when it first came out. I tried it. I played it in that. Yeah. But I've not I've not played a single game of that oh. since then. But I've heard so many good things about it. We should, we should try. Just it. totally do it. Right. Sorry, go on, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So we went from where do we go from from Black Ops Three to uh, a trailer for Destiny Two, mm-hmm. which I caught a glimpse of. Um, sorry, I was I was watching it, but I was sort of half half on my phone at that point, <laughs> and I was surprised because it looked like it looked like they were going to kill off um, Cade Six. Yes. Cade Six. Yes. Which is the character that was uh, voiced by Nathan Fillion that everybody loved. Who, to be honest royally got on my nerves in that last game so I'm fine with them killing him off because <laughs> <laughs> he was just just annoying um, but I'm really surprised if, if they go in that direction because it seems like the whole of the Destiny fan base loves that character yes. so I don't know why they would go there except you um, of course except me <laughs> yeah basically um, so we'll see they have said in, in, a, in a statement that Cade 6 ends up paying the ultimate price mm. so you have to I guess you have to think that they're going to they're gonna take him out wow but there we go. interesting yeah, so more Destiny. I don't know if you're interested in that anymore. Um, I've sort of lost lost interest in it now. But I'm waiting for this. I'm waiting for this kind of year two to then jump back in. Although we've we've had a because I bought the season pass, so I bought the ultimate edition of Destiny when it came out. So I've got Nicola. Of course you did. <laughs> that's, that's that's my default edition. Um, so huh? Nicola and I have kind of got two expansions yet to play. But I think the first one was a little bit wishy washy, but the second one was mm. better. So it's kind of I wouldn't mind kind of getting those under the belt before this comes out. Was it September that this comes out? I believe so. It's meant to be one of the bigger ones, isn't it? Yes. Because they do their sort of sort of smaller DLC and then they come out with a larger story-based one. So mm. I guess this is this is the one that you, you would definitely want to play. So we went from there into um, something that people were really excited about, which was a Resident Evil 2 remake. Yes. Um, which I've got to say looked looked surprisingly good. Like you, you think about that first Resident Evil remake, which was which, which was pretty good. But this, they've taken it a step further, and mm. they seem to have remade the whole game. Like every asset, everything in there is is totally different. Um, I've got fond memories of that game. Oh. To be honest, I, it was one of my favorite games. Well, definitely one of my favorite Resident Evils. I'd probably go f- four was four was the best one, but two is the one that I've got fondest memories of outside of that. Mm. Um, so if if this comes out this year, which I think it is, yeah, I think it I will f- definitely be looking. Oh, hang on, we got twenty Jan- fifth January twenty nineteen. So it's in that it's in that window again. Yes. Um, but yeah, this this looks pretty damn good because that that game could be scary as hell. I think now that they've redone everything with you know modern lighting and shadows and uh, yeah, I've got good memories of being scared by that in in my uh, youth. So I suspect I will be reliving those come come uh, January. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. Yeah, no, I'm all in. When I saw that was because when I didn't, I mean, it, it was half past two in the morning at this point. But I was like, I wasn't quite sure what it was, and I was like, what is this? And mm. then I kind of, then you saw kind of Leon, and then you realised, yeah, yeah. And here. I was like, I was so happy about that. You know, I had I had nowhere to talk to because it was the <laughs> the hours of the morning, but I was so happy about that coming out because yeah, I'm the same as you. Fond memories of two. I love the setting. I love the police station. Um, you know, it was yeah. just really cool. So yeah, so this coming out. I'm very excited. So this comes out next year. Yeah, it comes out in January 2019. So it says. What happens? What happens? Because obviously, all the games that come out in November-ish this year, they, they will normally slip anyway because everything mm. slips to like February and March time. What happens to the games that are due out in January and February? Because they'll have to get those out before the financial year. Yes. So we might just have a glut of games that are really bad next year. Oh my god! Anyway, yes, anyway. yes, because <laughs> every, everyone's trying to get out of the way of Red Dead, aren't they? Which is, you know, looks like it's of course, which yeah. looks like it's coming out, man. It looks like it's coming out. No, I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. February, February twenty nineteen, <laughs> telling you, or March twenty second of February yeah. twenty nineteen. That's when it's going to come out. <laughs> yeah. So the next thing that was up on the stage was uh, a new game by Sucker Punch called Ghost of Tsushima. I think it was called, mm-hmm. um, which is like a. It looks like a story-driven kind of uh, samurai game, 
with kind of um, very Dark Soulsy combat. So it looked very very realistic. Um, it looked like I mean there, there were a bunch of enemies that were on screen. It looked like they could take you down in one hit, and you could take them down in one hit as well. So it's kind of like Bushido Blade ish. Mm. Mm. If you remember playing that on the PlayStation One, yep. where you get that that tension of you know if you don't get your guard up right, you just you're going to be taken out straight away. Um, really, really well produced demo. I thought uh, graphically it looked stunning. Again, as all of these games do this year. Um, but I thought the uh, the dialogue was really good as well, and the, mm. and the voice acting seemed seemed decent. Yes. Um, so definitely intrigued by that one. Um, after that, we had uh, what could only have been a Remedy shooter, because as soon as you saw it, you knew it was Remedy, because it looks like every Remedy game ever made. I thought they've it got, was Alan Wake. Those, I thought it was Alan Wake. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've just got that, that kind of graphical style yes. about them, right? Where you just you can just tell yeah. straight away. It's that, that combination of motion blur and kind of slightly weird, loose animation, mm. and you can just tell straight away. Um, this looks very much like... Um, do, you remember, do you remember PsyOps? Back on PlayStation 2. No. PlayStation no, 2 and Xbox. No. It's, it's like a third person shooter where you've got kind of these psychic powers basically where you can control you can control things like you can, you know, send crates flying, send doors flying, yes. that, that sort of stuff. This looks like that, basically. But brought up to date. And it looked pretty good. Mm-hmm. I I'm not entirely I wasn't sold on it, to be honest. It looked it looked decent, but I'm not sure it's particularly moving anything forward. Um, I, I don't know what you guys thought of it. Yeah, I thought it looked... Is, is this one that, that's going to be exclusive to PlayStation 4? Yeah, it's called Control. Right. I should have said that. Stuff. Yeah, no, this this looks really cool. I'm, I'm, I am I'm thought it looked... Like I say, it just looked like a Remedy game. It looked like Quantic Dreams. Quantic... Was that there? Uh, Quantum... Uh, what, was, what was it? Quantum Break. Quantum Break. Quantum, Quantum break, yeah. break, so yeah, it looks a bit like that. It looks a bit like Alan Wake, as you say, you know, kind of. Uh, so yeah, though, but I'm I'm quite interested. I'm interested to kind of jump in. Yeah, yeah. So you got a your character sort of flies flies around, and you know they've got these powers where they can control control objects, and you know um, that 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 sort of stuff. So it could be it could be a physics fest, mm. which could be nice, I guess, on X- Xbox One X, Xbox One X. Even. Yes. How about you, Steve? You interested in it? Yeah, I mean, do, do, any, do you guys remember a game called Second Sight? By uh, the time split yes, guys, yes. It, it reminded yes. me a little yeah, bit yeah. of that really because that was the same one. It that yeah. you control stuff from from afar, like you had sort of kinetic powers and the psychic powers. So. That's right. Yeah, that's... psyops and second sight mm. came out around about the same time, and they were basically the same. Yeah, game, yeah. Which was... <laughs> yeah, I think I thought it was quite um, underloved second sight really because that was kind of after yeah. time splitters they, they did that, and then that was kind of it, wasn't it really? But I, mm. I really oh. enjoyed that. I was thinking, I the game actually still, but but yeah, it, it reminded yeah. me a little bit of that. Which, like I say, it's not necessarily anything new but you know it, it, could, yeah, be fun. it could be fun so yeah I, I was quite yeah. interested in it, yeah. and from there the, we moved on to uh, a Koei Tecmo game called Neo 2 which I'm surprised at because it feels like Neo only came out last year mm. um, well I haven't said that they've not given a release date for this so it could be it could be many years off um, the trailer looks very very similar to the first one I don't, I don't know if you guys saw much of the first game but it's um uh, it's very Dark Soulsy, um, basically. But I think the key difference with Neo is that there are actual distinct levels. Mm. So whereas Dark Souls is one massive sprawling open world, Neo is very much you know you can play these levels and replay them and replay them. So it's kind of it is as brutal and harsh as that game, but you're not losing massive amounts of progress. Yeah, I, I um, played that because the, the opening level is when you have to get out of town, of London, and you dress like a beef mm. eater. And so I kind of played that and then kind of got through that, and then I realised that that game wasn't for me. But it was it, it no. was great, it was quite it was it was I played that and I kept dying, and then I was just like, this is a really good game. I really like it, but it's just not for me. And I packed yeah. packed it back off to Boomerang. I seem, to, I seem to remember. I was listening. To, I remember listening to the podcast, and I think Darren really liked it. Yes, me, yeah, I think he did. Yeah, I think he, he talks about it a lot. Mm. I remember him liking it. Yeah. Um, so from there, we went on to what could be, what could be the greatest game of all time. Oh my god! But probably isn't going to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding. Um, I guess this is the first time we've seen yes. gameplay. Yes. And I have no freaking idea what this game is, even though I've seen that trailer. Must have been a good five ten minutes long. Uh, it, it looks like you are a person who is walking across a wasteland delivering objects to something or someone. Yes. And that's kind of it. I, I, I couldn't make head nor tail of it, to be honest. But I know I want to play it because it's, <laughs> it's bonkers. So at certain points, obviously, we've, we've seen in the past that you'll be coming up against these supernatural foes that you can't see. But then there are characters that can see them. Yes. And everybody's dressed like they're in some kind of PVC dungeon. And... 
it's just it's mad at some point you're carrying a body at one point you're carrying a baby yes the baby might be a bomb no one knows at one point you're walking across a ladder across a massive ravine with 16 different boxes on your back like a dhl person from hell i don't know <laughs> it could be anything it's a deliver them um, up is what it is you just yeah. go, it's just bizarre and then they kind of introduced is that leah said um who um so she's a character as well so they introduced a new character so leah said is the actress who was in specter mm. um and, and other movies um, so and um, so she was introduced to it as well but yeah I just it kind of one of those ones where you're just kind of oh they're showing gameplay we're going to figure out what this is but you just just have yeah, no I've, idea uh, it's just bonkers I just need to play it I, I'm I'm mad excited yeah. for it because I know it's going to be crazy and then they um, at one point at one point they kind of tapped the baby vessel that was on Norman Reedus's mm-hmm. chest and then he could see or someone could see all of the beings that were kind of hanging up in the sky that were just floating there in the sky and it was just it's just bizarre yeah. it's like how do you take these on how do you how do you handle them it was just yeah it was just it was interesting and bonkers at the same time there's a there's a theory that the the, the baby might be a version of Norman Reedus so it's like a DNA thing like they funneled his DNA into the baby and then he's got to protect it because it's a version of him right. that will then grow up and it's like a time trial I don't know it's mad anyway but if you it's if Kojima, you put all those trailers yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah Steve's right it's Kojima I guess if you what I, oh, do you know what I might do after the pod I'm going to watch all of the Death Stranding trailers and that gameplay together <clears throat> and that just like yeah. that would give me nice dreams <laughs> yeah uh, there was an interview with Mads Mikkelsen and Norman Reedus I think last month talking about it yeah. and they said he's a genius and they asked him if they knew what the game was about and they, has, they, said, they just said we have no idea we've done thousands of lines of dialogue for it I couldn't tell you what it was about brilliant wow <laughs> that's, that's what I want <laughs> Superb. Um, so from that craziness we went to another From game right it seems like they've they've done three games this year. Yes. I think they've announced, yeah. which is surprising actually, considering they're a relatively small uh, developer and publisher. Um, so they're making a game called De- Deracine, I think it's called. I'm not sure entirely sure how you pronounce that, um, but it is. Uh, it looks largely like a like a kind of horrorish mm-hmm. game um, set in olden times. Um, the trailer looked. Interesting, but I couldn't really tell much of what. Again, I couldn't really tell much about what what it was going to be. Obviously, it's PlayStation VR, so I, I imagine it'll be kind of um, relatively sort of straightforward horror line and shock value and so on and so forth. But does this tempt you to get your helmet back out, Anthony? If you'll if you'll pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> Super. I just yeah, I do. I just think you know, kind of when I saw this, it was like PSVR. I was like, oh, you know, I'm quite interested. It's yeah, time to dust off the helmet. You know, I just think it's it's really cool. You know, I just yeah, I, anything new for PlayStation VR. I'm still, you know, I was surprised they didn't kind of uh, there wasn't any announcement, any hardware announcements about a new VR or anything like that. So so yeah, though, this this does make me still want to kind of just play something if there's a physical version of it you know again this is kind of a rental thing that i'll just kind of have a play around mm. but yeah no, it looked it looked really cool and knowing that it comes from a pedigree such as from software you know it's kind of uh it's interesting to just kind yeah. of break it break it out was there much else on psvr psvr actually i can't remember there being much announced for no it. remember this and no i don't remember another thing they announced beat saber um, and the build up, oh, yeah, so yeah. that and that looks amazing. I cannot wait to play that. I remember Darren showing me that when that was kind of the first time he showed me kind of VR. Um, and we did we mm. did kind of a bit of a stream and we did like a screen share and he was showing me that. And that was just like that game. I was just like, I want that on PlayStation VR, and now it's on there. You know, that just looked like such a great game. Yeah, and there was um there was a Tetris game as well, wasn't yeah. there? I think that might yeah, have been another one. bonkers Tetris Worlds. And there was also mad, another one that was a little bit like um. There was a little bit like um, the the game that I loved, uh, Moss. There was another one of those. Hmm. I think it was called Ghost Giant or something like that, referring to you as the the Ghost yeah. Giant. So it was very much kind of like Moss, where they're interacting with you as like some being. So they, they there wasn't a big push for VR, but they're just still showing that there's there's titles still, there. Yeah. So I'm still kind of waiting on more playstation kind of first party titles for it just to show that they're still backing it yeah i'm not not sure that's ever coming but no who knows no who knows uh and then the only other thing i've got on my list here for sony is um spider-man oh. which i know you're extremely excited about i can't wait for this game it looks incredible it looks uh, you're a bit lukewarm on this aren't you i, I think i think it looks 
amazing and i've had good fun with previous games especially when they get the web swinging stuff right but i always just find the combat really lightweight and really 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 flaky <laughs> and you're pointing to a water tower there will be a lot of water tower. <laughs> um, but yeah i always i always just find the combat really just really lightweight and really kind of really kind of unsatisfying yes in those games i I don't know why. Yes. With no Batman game this year, this looks like it's going to scratch my Batman itch. You mm-hmm. know, because there was lots of chaining combos together. His spider sense was tingling. So when you had to press Y or triangle to do more combos and stuff like that. What did you think, Steve? Yeah. Did you kind of... Did Spider-Man get you excited? It doesn't. It doesn't. You know, I mean, if you look historically at the Spider-Man games that we've had, uh, it's very questionable, isn't it? You know, in terms of the, the release mm. we've had and... You know, Batman was probably the same until we had the, you know, the um, the Rock City releases. So I think this could potentially bring the Spider-Man sort of with the Water Towers, as, as, as Anthony keeps pointing to on his on his on his pint glass in the background. But uh, but yeah, I think this kind of has the the opportunity and, and the chance to bring Spider-Man video games to life again, like say like the Rock City games with Batman. I'm not the biggest Spider-Man fan in in the world, but I've. Um, you know the the recent Spider-Man movie, the Homecoming movie. I, I loved that. I thought that was a really good, a really good movie. Mm. And I think Spider-Man, albeit, has had a lot of again Spider-Man games have had the same sort of the movies with how many people have played Spider-Man in the last sort of ten years. You know, there's been so many different Spider-Man movies. You know, new Spider-Man, then another Spider-Man, and another Spider-Man. And I think the movies kind of now find its its protagonist. I think it's kind of found its feet, and mm. the video games I think will be the same in terms of. This will come out, and maybe those games will kind of mirror the moves a little bit more. But I'm happy, like you say, it kind of scratches that superhero video game. It we don't really have many superhero video games like that. So to me, I'm I'm, I'm happy to give it a go, For you sure. know, and and you know. Yeah. Swing from water tower to water tower and see see what happens. Protect those protect yeah. those water towers. I just think I just think the um the villains that they're using in this, which looks like it's going to be the Sinister Six, I, I just think this is gonna be fantastic. You know, and there's obviously Negative Man who is kind of the main guy. It's <laughs> permanently pissed off. <laughs> it's just like a video game pundit. Um so negative man. Um so it just like says negative man and then the Sinister Six and they kinda of left one out because I think at the end of the trailer Spider-Man was like you and that was in there they kind of left that out so I don't know who they're kind of have it could be it could be Doctor Doom it could be Mysterio who's who's potentially going to be the new villain for the next movie um so I'm quite excited and what with this coming out later on in the year and the next Spider-Man movie which is Into the Spider-Verse which is a cell shaded CGI movie that's coming to cinemas in uh kind of November December time I just think the two of those things together are just going to be fantastic because you're going to go into the cinema you're going to watch this movie Miles Morales is the Spider-Man and then you know you're going to come there's Peter Parker and Miles Morales in the Inter Spider-Verse you're going to come to this game Miles Morales is going to be in there it's probably going to be a DLC character as well you know it's just going to tie in really nice it's just it's and and I just love the look of that Spidey-Verse movie as well it just looks so good it looks so good and that trailer has been seen something like I don't know 20 million times or something so I think there's a lot oh there's goodness. a lot of excitement for it um, so I just yeah for me it was just like I cannot wait Spider-Man went from I'm really interested in this, this game to ooh, I might take a day off work when it comes out you know it kind of went from that from that trailer you know I was like I, was a... I might take a day off fair play man proper pump fair play. proper pump <laughs> I think for that. pre-orders yeah. Red Dead, if Red Dead actually comes out, that'll be the one that I'll take oh, a day off for, I think. Yes, yes, <laughs> if it comes out. If it comes yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Asterisk caveat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could, yeah. you, could you take one of those days off work? It's like, if this game is released, I'm going to take the day off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Super. 2020. So was that the Sony conference? Yeah, that was it. So I think we move on to Nintendo. We've got to Manny score it first. We've got to Manny score it. Oh, God, what did I give it? I think I think I went for a solid seven. I've closed the document now, so I can't remember. But I think it was a seven. Um, okay, I'd, Steve. I'd say six. I think I'd say six. <laughs> it, it takes a lot to get <laughs> always to, one below. Me. Always one below. Um, I, I'm going to give it a seven point five because of Spider Man, because of yeah, because of Spider Man, Resident Evil Two. I was, you know, it was a great conference. I'm just, you know, still. 
bitterly disappointed that we haven't got anything about this Final Fantasy remake across the whole of E3. You know, no one's saying anything about Final Fantasy VII. And the fact that the fact that both Sony and Microsoft have had games in their previous conferences that we still don't know anything about below that really cool cyberpunky 2D game that they showed off last year and Final Fantasy VII. You know, the fact that these people are just like making these 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 trailers, dropping these little tidbits and these kind of little um, super cut things and then just just never 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 coming back to them while telling us so i'm going to give sony a a 7.5 a really good showing with some really good games some bonkers games but uh they deduct some points for just not showing me any final fantasy <laughs> so so i'm going to give that 7.5 and then on to nintendo steve do you want to kick through nintendo nintendo did a thing and uh, that's about it really isn't it you know that's that's, that's all we can say i think <laughs> they certainly um, did a the, thing they the, certainly the, did, the, did that did thing something Nintendo yeah, do the thing for about twelve minutes. And then fuck it off. Um, I mean, this is probably the, the, the quickest, <laughs> the quickest list you can go through. I think really is that Mario Party is coming to Switch, which is you know fair enough. You know, Mario Party is a is a nice mm-hmm. little game to to play on. on I think the last one the, the Wii U when it came out um, on the Wii U, the, the short lived Wii U. Um, you know, they're usually quite fun games to to play with mm. the uh, with friends and family. Mm-hmm. Them, so that that's quite. You know, quite a, a nice little game to, to have, and definitely a, a rent uh, from Boomerang. Certainly, um, there was some um, Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles, which is how you want to pronounce it. Uh, some new DLC um, that's coming out to that. I've, I've not played that one, admittedly, uh, but there's some more content coming out this way. The Golden Plum Tree um, that's coming out in September, um, so that adds a little bit more more to the game, um, and that's. Um, it's something about having a refined battle system um, as well so I don't know if that means they've changed it or updated it since it came out uh, but I, I don't know if any either of you guys have played played that but not playing it I'm, I'm not entirely sure what, what that really alludes to to be honest but um, yeah no I've, it's, I've not tried it no, it's not no, my cup of tea either. but it's, uh, either way it's, it's getting some uh, some extra support uh, later on this year um, as Fortnite's coming out that's out now that that was announced as in the same day, so they said Fortnite is coming out to Switch, and that was I think it was pretty much straight away their time, but it was the evening in UK time, um, so that's now a thing um, on Switch. I've not downloaded it, I've not tried it. Um, as, as you can probably gather, the battle royale thing's not re- not really my thing. Um, no, <laughs> not, I mean not really a cup of tea, I mean, is it? I guess it's I guess it's still free. Um, on, on the switch, I mean, I've been yes. yeah, yeah. free yeah. and download it and have gone. I think there's there's some um, cross play, but I've seen um, I've seen some people have issues with this really because you can play across different platforms from so PlayStation players or Xbox players play on Switch players, but people having issues logging into their accounts from say the PlayStation and Xbox to the one on the Switch, so they've had to set up new accounts and start from afresh. Um, so it's. It's they, Sony. Sony have locked it out. So right. I think Xbox. Yeah. So if you play on Xbox, all your progress will transfer across because you can sign in to the same uh, Fortnite account on the Switch. Mm-hmm. So all, all your purchases and stuff will carry across. But for whatever reason, Sony have gone oh. the opposite way and they've locked it down. So if you played it and you've set up a Fortnite account on the PS4, you can't sign into the one on the Switch with that. So if you've got characters and progress and unlocks and all that kind of stuff, you've got to create a whole separate character then and start fresh on That's the Switch. That seems silly. Which is bonkers. That I don't know why they're silly. doing it. I mean, I'm guessing the crossplay works. Yeah. yeah. Is it, is it, does that still work? Or? I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. I think crossplay works on Xbox, it. PC, mobile, but it doesn't work on PlayStation, I think. Is that kind of what the, the big hubbub was last night? It, but like you say, it was also, if you'd already if you'd already registered your account, your Fortnite account, or logged in on PlayStation 4, and then tried to do it on Nintendo Switch, it was mm. locking, just completely locking it out. And it was so, there was there was a big there was a big uproar last night about that. So it just, it's, Sony are not playing. Mad, They're just it? not playing with anyone, why. are they? No, it's crazy. Crazy because it's just going to push people towards the Xbox version. You know, if you have got the portable version and you want to play it on on the TV, not you know, not play it on the Switch, then you're going to go for the Xbox now because you can you can, your progress carries across both. Yeah. So I, I don't understand. Mm. I don't understand why they do yeah. it. It's mad. But yeah, but that's out now. Um, I don't know if you guys have played it, but from what I've seen, other people saying who have played it, it, it runs pretty much and looks pretty much the same as the PS4 and the Xbox version. So that's that's quite quite reassuring um, for, for 
like I say, if, if you want to mm. play it and you can't get it on the Xbox, it's a, another avenue to play it on, you know, portable or on a second screen. Um, I think we touched on this earlier. Overcooked 2 um, has been announced, and that's coming out later this summer. Um, yeah, I think Anthony's game of, uh-huh. game of the year, uh, potentially. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> It looks to have added. It's just Nicola just shouts yeah. at me a lot. She just shouts yeah. at me yeah. a lot. Uh, have you heard about one of the main new features? Of yes, it, throwing food. You throw you food. Throw yeah, food. that's that's a game changer. I just for sure. I just love it. You can throw food, and also you can take food to a plate, and not because like yes. before you're like you're just panic going. I need to put this down because I need to grab a plate. You have a burger, yeah. but you haven't got a plate. But now that you can take the the kind of food to the plate or the plate to the food. Um, so I'm quite excited yeah. about that because that's one less thing to be shouted at. Do you reckon Nicola gets so angry she throw actual food? At you? Do you reckon that, do you reckon that actually happened? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's happened. That must have happened. I, I'm just, I'm just. The funny thing is, is that, that you know, Nicola really loves this game. You know, so much so that she's played it on the Xbox. We played it on Switch, and she just like absolutely loves Overcooked so much. But she just instantly becomes like Gordon Ramsay. She just becomes <laughs> so angry, so angry, and shouts. So I am just like, I'm like, I'm enjoying this, but at the same time, I'm scared for my life. You know, I really do. Just like, like I couldn't bring her around to your house, Manny, to play because. She would probably just kill us all. <laughs> yeah. It'll be interesting. If I'm going to go out, I'll go ahead. You're like, we're not inviting the Chessons around anymore. It's just like, we're just like, this is why we can't have friends. Is, uh, that'll be me driving home crying. So, this is why we can't meet nice people. Because. <laughs> For more than a minute, you shout at everyone. But I, I'm looking forward to the start because the start's always nice and easy. You know, I, I watched the trailer today and it looks like they're. They're ramping up the difficulty on some of those levels. They look like they look so much fun, but they look quite hard. Yeah, um, I'm definitely going to be playing that day this, one for sure. So, are you going to test? Are you going to test your marriage, Steve, on this as well? Your pending nuptials on this? Well, I'm going to say pending marriage. This could be the deal breaker. <laughs> it really good. It? it really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I didn't play the first one, um, but certainly I'd, I'd be willing to give it a go. You know, I'd, I'd give it a try, and, and like you say, it can it can test the test the strength of the uh, the engagement count that if you hands start getting lobbed around the around the house like what are you doing? You should you should try it out because <laughs> yeah. the original is um in uh, Games Pass now. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, X uh, in Xbox cool. Game Pass so you can get the original Overcooked is in there. You should you should give it a try. Because the thing with Nicola is that she won't skip onto the next level until we've three starred it. So hmm. you know, right. so I'm happy getting one star. I'm like, yep, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> you know, but we have to get three stars before we move on. So, so you will not move exactly. I'm like, right, we got perfect in every way. We've got two. It's two. Two's good enough for me. I'm happy. I'm not an overachiever. Right, right, let's move on. But no, <laughs> we have to. So, so if you know, if you're less strict, it can be a lot more uh, fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not that sort of person. I, I'd be like, you said, I'd be much like you that I'm happy I passed it. Let, let's just let's just go. Let's just move on. Absolutely, carry on. <laughs> absolutely. So that's coming out August eighth, I believe. I've got in my calendar uh, already, and that's available to pre-order on uh, Xbox. And that's definitely one of the games I will be pre-ordering over the mm-hmm, weekend. Mm-hmm. Come Sunday, <laughs> come pre-order. I'm going to say, I'm sorry, you haven't done it already. <laughs> I think that was a, yeah, it was announced today. So yeah, come Sunday, I uh, will give you my count of how many games I've pre-ordered. <laughs> Get a tally going. I reckon at least six minimum. <laughs> yeah. And if what else? Um, but, what else did Nintendo have? Surely they had lots and lots and lots of news for us. Yeah, well, yeah, we're on the penultimate one, so yeah, we've got we've got <laughs> lots to go through still. Um, but yeah, Ho- Hollow Knight was uh, announced. That that's out on Switch now. Um, so that's um, so that was. Um, Originally announced for the Switch in January last year, I believe. Uh, but then it kind of went dark a little bit. Um, it was delayed until 2018. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so kind of just went a bit silent and then pushed it back and pushed it back. Um, but yeah, a number of different delays and things like that. But yeah, it's, it's, certainly it's, oh yeah, it's out now. Um, so another one of those things that, oh yeah, it's available today, which is, is nice to see. But yeah, a bit, a bit of a delayed, a bit of a launch for it, um, but yeah, it's it's good from from reading the the sort of the technical aspects of it. It runs at sort of sixty frames, and and all the expansions released so far um, are available and in, included in it as well. So um, it's not something that I've really paid much attention to, um, admittedly. But to, to say that it's been delayed so far, you know, in terms of being pushed back and pushed back, all the extra content you get get with it as well, um, mm. it's nice to see as well, and and it run. Um, run, you know, quite quite nice and smooth on the, on the switch yeah. as well. Do we know what kind um, of game this is? Do we know what kind of game Hollow Knight um, is? It's, 
it's kind of a bit sort of a Metroidvania themed, I think, from from what I'm from what I'm reading. Okay. So, um, so a little bit like that. Like I say, I've not I've not seen too much about it to be honest. No, I think no. I'll probably yeah, it's like going... a it's like a two D platformer with Metroidvania yeah. kind of progress. I think it looks it looks pretty good. It's meant to be great. Sounds superb. Mm. That sounds like a good uh, yeah. a, a nice little game for the Switch for travels. Mm. But, yeah, but that's it. I mean, and I think we've kind of covered this up subject for. You know, many podcasts before, but I think the Switch seems like a, a sort of a perfect platform for these sort of games, doesn't it? Really, you know, the small, the sort of two two point five D games that you can just pick up and you know on your travels, that sort of thing. So, mm. so yeah, that that's that's available now um, for ten ninety nine in in pounds and fifteen US dollars for, for those people, for those people in America. And then we come to the the, the final final piece of news. <laughs> um, <sighs> Smash Bros is coming out. Great. Uh, that's, edition. See, see, that's what they should have done. Yes. Like that, I yeah. would have been happy with. Just to end it there, would have been fine. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they, they decided to spend the, the best part of half an hour um, <laughs> going through every single character and how they spell their names and what clothes they're going to be wearing and what the personalities and favourite colours are. And Yeah, the Smash Bros. Ultimate Edition, which includes every character from the series so far, and I think they went to great lengths to show every single character <laughs> from <laughs> so far, and Every finisher, control every support. Move. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's out on seventh of December. Um, I, I, so I, 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 I get that Smash is like a big thing. You know, it's got a big audience and stuff. And there was, there would have been some people that would have loved that. But I'm sure even the majority of people that just like that game would have been like, "That's too much. Just, yeah. just too much. I can't take it all in. What's the point? Yes, it's crazy. Yeah, yes. I mean, like you said, if they just said the ultimate edition is coming out it's got every character from every game it's yeah. out in December here's a trailer that's it yeah but here's a trailer yeah that's it yeah that'd be enough not here's it's... a second costume here's a third mm. costume yes. this person's got four costumes let's look at them all <laughs> yeah but have you thought about doing it this way you know but it's, it's... <laughs> here's with... every single stage exactly. here's all the music yeah, and here's all the moves, here's the special moves, yeah. and then the same. And it was just, I don't know who at Nintendo thought that this was a good idea. Like I say, I know there's people at Fever Pitch about Smash, but, mm. you know, at some point they focus test these people, just show someone this and go, and people would just, you'd see people reaching for their phones and getting bored. You know, there would just be, I mean, I, I was telling you guys before we started potting, you know, I was watching the Nintendo conference when it hit, when it dropped, it was live on Twitch and Mixer and stuff, and uh, we, we had torrential rain. And Nicola didn't take an umbrella or a raincoat, so I said, I'll come and pick you up. So I kind of left where they kind of started on on Smash. I was like, don't worry, I'll get back in time, because she doesn't work too far from the house. So I went and picked her up, had a quick look in the car while I was waiting for her to kind of get to finish work. And they were doing Smash. I'm like, it's fine. Got home, and they were still doing Smash. You know, and I was just like, why? Why are it's you mad, doing this? It? Where's the DLC I... for Mario Odyssey? Where's all those new games? Where's all that other yeah. stuff that you could be doing? I feel, I feel like I've played and finished that game game yes, you know, just yes. Like, i've seen every single thing in it so are either of you interested in it is it a game that you would play with a group or no uh, i've tried them before and i've just never been able to get into it like i love i don't mind those kind of games like i uh, used to play we used to play um power stone back in the dreamcast yes you know, which is a very similar sort of thing and that was great but for whatever reason i've just never been able to get into the smash series it's just a bit too frenetic i never really it's one of those games where i can't i can't track visually what's going on on the no. screen, I never know where I am, so it's like it's uh, too much going on. Yeah, I just, I, it's just lost on me. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I've played one since Brawl well, on the GameCube, which it was a great game. But I don't, you know, I mean, this had to be fair. I mean, it'd be worth a rental from Boomerang, you know. But it's like you say, there's there's a lot going on with Smash, and it's quite, you know, there's a lot of hard for following. Which probably will enjoy the fact that this is coming out. But for the average, let's say the average Nintendo. Owner or Nintendo Switch owner, shall we say? Like to say, there's a lot more that they could have done. Which we we had the Pokemon news last week, the week before. We could have had a little bit more information about that. You know, that like mm. say the DLC for Mario Odyssey. You know, there's, there's so much more that they, they could have done, and there must be so much more in the pipeline that is coming for the Switch. Uh, did, you know, did, it, um, did, did it show that uh, Pokeball controller? Didn't they? I think. Yes. If I remember right. Yeah. Then. Yeah. But that we, was just we, like a ten, that. ten second thing. That was just Reggie. Yeah, that but, was Reggie, wasn't it? Just doing a kind of intro to Pokemon yeah, Pikachu right. and Eevee, you know, which mm. which as Steve was saying, they've already done that. So they spent mm. time kind of doing that. You know, it's interesting because they do have treehouse style presentations. Um, they have one today and they've got one tomorrow. Um they've got one on tomorrow and Friday. Um and I just had a quick look while Steve was giving a rundown, I had a quick look at the news. 
to see if anything else came out of that just in case they were hiding some good stuff in the tree house events and I can't see anything the only thing that they did yeah. they said that Yoshi's the Yo- new Yoshi game is, is delayed to 2019 yeah just give us Animal Crossing please yes yeah there was a I think that was uh, James's but I don't think James I think he's fallen out with Nintendo hasn't he you know <laughs> it's been begging it's been begging for, a, for an Animal Crossing which You'd, you'd, for all money, you'd think they were going to announce something with us having the mobile game, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd, you'd, you'd think there was something. So even if it was just a snippet, just a sniff of, oh, by the way, this animal crossing in the work. So it's like, even if it was just coming out next year. Yeah, yeah, just for sure. Just say it's coming out next year. Yeah, I tried to a, uh, a logo or something. Yeah, exactly. Just show us kind of a you know they had they had uh, villagers in Smash. I tried to troll James yesterday on on our WhatsApp group because I was like villagers, there's villagers, and then I felt so bad that I just quickly typed after that in Smash. You know, James hadn't even seen it because no, I felt really he bad. Just and dreams, yeah, just, cruel man. He would just punch me. He was just like he would just he would kill me. But yeah, so it was they have villagers in there, but yeah, they look really good. You you know, in Smash, you know, they, they the villagers, they look really cool. So I just want mm. that in a Animal Crossing game. Yeah, for sure. Maybe, maybe they're not going to do it. Maybe they see that mobile phone app as, like, that's where the series is now, and that's yeah. it. I don't no. know. I hope not. It's, yeah. it's still good Hopefully fun. Not. Ali and I are still playing it. <laughs> <laughs> just the two of you, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, just a, you're propping it up yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Superb. So that was it, I guess. That was Nintendo. Yeah, that, uh, that's about it, yeah. So scoring... Oh, scoring. <laughs> uh, I think I went with a, a three. Yeah, yeah. With hindsight, I might even drop that to a two. <laughs> two for Manny. Because there's nothing. Oh, no, Overcook, though. No, it's, it's a three. Okay, three for Manny. Steve? I'm going to say a one. <laughs> one. <laughs> I you, you, that, that might as well not happen for me. That yeah. might as well not happen. Like you say, they could have had these treehouse things or just a, a Nintendo Direct, say, next one. Yeah. Mm. You know, something just to, to, well, by the way, this is going to, you know, just a little thing like that. Because bear in mind, obviously, Nintendo do this across the year with their Directs. This just seems like a Nintendo Direct thing. Mm. Yeah. E3 should be the biggest one. You know, save the Pokemon for, for the the, uh, the E3. Then they could have dropped the, the Smash thing for last week. You know, yeah, did indeed. that with the Direct with the Smash and then put the Pokemon in the E3, but... Mm. I don't know. I don't know. But you imagine if we hadn't heard of uh, Pikachu EV, and then they did a proper announcement for that and this and some, or, you know, they it could have been amazing. You know, it could have been oh, yeah. fantastic. You know, Super Mario Party looks great. I'm going to play that because we we've got a long flight. So, you know, that comes out in October. We're going on holiday in November. You know, so I'm, I'm going to download that for the flight. That could be really good fun. But yeah. It was just such a. It was a wasted opportunity. It's almost like Nintendo yeah. just don't care about E3. It's just like let's just get something out there just to kind of you yeah. know appease the fans. I'm going to give it the same that I gave Square Enix um, because I just didn't care about it. So I'm going to give it a two, which kills me. You know, because Switch is like riding the waves at the moment, so it kills me to give Nintendo a two. You know, mm. this is it though. It's got such a big year this year and next year, hasn't it? You know. It- to, to obviously compete in a different way to the Xbox and the PlayStation 4, that it needs to ride on the games that's coming out, but it can't just sit on its laurels. You know, it's got to have the titles to support it. And then just to be so blase about, well, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, 12 hours coming out. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, yeah, the Smash coming out this year. There you go. Fuck you, Pop. <laughs> it's just like, it's just like a, a really good chef just coming out with like sausages and mash and just going, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's 50 quid. I, I don't go. care. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'll yeah. be 100 quid. It's just like, there you go. <laughs> Eat it because I made it. You know, that's it. Yeah. Oh. So on that delicious note, uh, we do get overcooked, which is really cool. So that's that's kind of E3. Yeah. That's kind of so highlights, guys. I guess mad. Um, I guess Manny, your uh, your highlight is the mad um, uh, Death Stranding trailer. I guess Death Stranding, yeah, definitely for sure. That's the thing that's stuck in my mind the most, anyway, just because yeah. I need to know. Yes, I need to know At least, what it is. What about yeah. you, Steve? What's what's kind of as you've been kind of talking about it as well this evening? What's your highlights? Um, as a cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is pretty much my you know my. my the game I'm probably most looking forward to in terms of just finding a bit more about it when it's happening, if it's this gen or next gen. Um, but I'm going to say Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, I'm going to love that game when it comes out. Albeit Sora's got a different voice, but I can get over that. I'm fine with that. It's just it's got older. It's got older. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, the, it's, it's the voice now, actor is now, is. you know, they've taken so long to make this. The voice actor is now 42. That's why, <laughs> you know, I'm sure, he was I eight was when they started. Used to voice him. Oh, really? I'm sure it was. 
Yeah, I might have. Read, I'm, I'm sure I recall reading that somewhere. There was actually a female that, that voiced in the original. But that's so many ways. Maybe, she, maybe, maybe, maybe she's got older. You know, maybe she, you know, sort of smoking and or something. You know, she's suddenly yeah. aged rapidly over the. the God, I'm, I'm years now since I'm, fucking Demas. I'm too. very, very convinced by you saying I'm fine with it, whilst also shaking your head from side to side <laughs> at the same time. This is very convincing. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll. Uh, I'll just Mute it. Play it on yeah. mute. Yeah. <laughs> just have the, have the, the dialogue zero. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Just yeah. put subtitles on and listen to some soothing music or a, a yeah. voice track of the old Zora doing kind of whatever. <laughs> so I think that's it. I mean, shall we wrap up, guys? I think we are going to be about three hours. Uh, yeah, what, what was your What was your highlight? Oh my! Oh yeah, no, my highlight. I guess Beyond Good and Evil. Forza? Yeah, Beyond Good and Evil, Forza Horizon Four, Forza Horizon Four. Yeah, I can see that being, yeah. I can see that being a ginormous game for me. So I think mine kind of is a mixture of Beyond Good and Evil, Spider Man, and but Forza Horizon Four. Fair play. I just, yeah, I'm just got too excited. They were the ones that just had me kind of, you know, very, very excited when they came on the screen. Yeah, I have. No, to I would have. S- I would have said those three games. If someone asked me what your highlights were going to be before the conference, I would have picked those three. Out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that predictable. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, it's like, was there any Star Wars games? No. Okay, it's going to be these. Yeah. I have to say, though, Batman. Yeah, I have to say, hats off to Microsoft because the Mixer 4K presentation of their conference was gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, it was good. I had some problems signing into it. I think I still think that app is a is a pile oh, of crap. it's horrible. But it's horrible. Yeah. yeah, when, yeah, yeah. Once you're in, it's great. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that was great. Yeah, it was so good, and it made those trailers when they had the trailers, you know, for all the games and everything. It just made those trailers just look so lovely as well. Yeah. You just sat there and just like I was really, I was really impressed, you know. And and you know, apart from obviously having problems signing in this year, you know, it didn't stop halfway through. I didn't have any problems. You know, it was just it was it was solid. It was really solid. So it was yeah, really cool. Fair play. It, was, it was really cool. You know, so who knows what the rest of E3 is going to kind of uh, bring up? But I'm sure we'll talk about it next week on the podcast. Cost, but I guess we should just we should take a break, get a bed. We're knackered, we're exhausted. <laughs> I need so, a wee. <laughs> I need to go to le- wrap up, Chesson. We need to get out of here. Right, <laughs> extra stuff. Big thank you for listening. Uh, let us know if you have any kind of highlights from E3. Don't forget, you can send that to feedback at gamersoflostspark dot com. Um, don't forget, you can also find us at gamersoflostspark dot com. You can also find us on Facebook, on Twitter, we're at Lost Spark Pod. You can also find us on YouTube and Gamers of Lost Spark PS4 Community and Xbox One. Club. Steve, where can people catch up with you? Um, so I'm Steve Carter 91 on Xbox Live uh, Cartero on the PSN and at Steve underscore Carter 91 on Twitter and don't ask me about my Nintendo ID it's a random sequence of numbers which I'm not sure about. <laughs> It'll get better when we pay for it um, Manny, yeah, yeah. Manny, where can people uh, find you online? Uh, I am General Garcia on Xbox and Steam, uh, Presidente Garcia on PSN, and underscore, sorry, Manuel underscore Garcia on Twitter. Excellent. Also switch, no clue. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. Um, um, excellent for me, I am Chessman on Xbox Live and Nintendo Switch. I think PS hyphen Chessman on the PlayStation Network and Chessman UK on Twitter. Don't forget, if you have any feedback, please send it to our email address. That's feedback at gameslostspark.com. That's about it, guys. Say goodbye. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye bye. Oh, that is staying in so much.